produce, the wonderful servants, the three in a row back here behind the serving counter who are assisting us today. These are all great women of God who um, are here to serve you, and I just appreciate them so much. Would you just give them a, <laughs> a, an advance appreciation? They are the best. Um, my name is Denise, and it is my honor to serve you today and to walk you through Gluten-Free 201. So we will be serving you breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, and uh, included in that lineup for the very first time today is pizza. So I hope that uh, I hope that you will enjoy the class as much as we have enjoyed preparing for you. We're so thrilled to have you with us today. And we are going to jump right in and we are going to cook, cook, cook. Um, I do have a question. I need to know who I'm cooking for today in terms of, um, for one thing, how many of you have either viewed online um, gluten-free bread and rolls or you attended the class in person. Did, has anybody seen that? Okay, several of you. The rest of you, that is uh, an, an excellent basis for this class, and there are lots and lots of facts and, uh, and pieces of information that are in that class that will not be repeated here today. So I wanna encourage you, go to our website, choose the Learn link, and then select Videos. And the video that you're looking for is gluten-free bread and rolls. And uh, just as a, as a basis for understanding all the great, wonderful flours that you can use. And like I said, I'm not going to repeat all that information here. So I really do encourage you to uh, see that later. And you can download that handout right from your home and watch this anytime at your convenience. Um, and so today we will be highlighting... Uh, primarily the three books on the right there. I've got Mommy and Me Gluten-Free, and the author of that cookbook is actually Sharon Fescannon, who is there in the, in the black apron with the green, green blouse, um, and she will actually spotlight one of her recipes for you today, and that is the traditional chocolate chip cookie, and you're going to love it. It gets rave reviews everywhere. And then What the Bible Says About Healthy Living Cookbook, we're doing several recipes out of there. It is not written to be a gluten-free cookbook, but I'm telling you, uh, most of what's in there is gluten-free already, and it's fabulous recipes that use good, wholesome ingredients that you and your family will love. And let me pull out a cutting board. I want to be, I need to be grating some carrot while we're discussing this. Um, do it on the fine and that but we will do several recipes out of there and so I look forward to sharing that with you and then I will just tell you in the places where she calls for the oat flour you can use the Bob's Red Mill gluten-free oats or the oat groats and you can put those in a dry blender and uh, we're we have done that actually with the mega blend this morning in preparation for um, the chocolate chip cookies, she milled in the Mega Blend some of those rolled oats for you. And those are certified gluten-free, inspected and certified. So for those who uh, really can't come in contact with a speck of gluten without it affecting them, uh, you're gonna be safe, okay? And so, so you can use that for your oats and then she calls for spelt flour uh, often. And that is actually an ancient strain of wheat that a lot of you may be able to tolerate and you just don't know it yet. So we have an article, it's actually a little note from Sue that uh, we can email to you or we'll print some out before y'all leave today, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that you can take with you. But that, um, that article is just gonna help you understand why spelt may be safe for you after all. Um, it, although it's not gluten-free, it, it contains a type of gluten uh, that is not the type that celiacs cannot digest. And so um, I'm not gonna go into all those details, but I do want you to get your hands on that little note from Sue. It's just a brief, brief article and check it out. 
because I think you're, you'll be um, interested in that. And then I think, too, it may open up a world of new recipes for you that you didn't have access to before. So, and what I'm doing right now is grating some carrot really fine for um, our carrot cake oatmeal. And I'm using our box grater. This one, it's very sharp and it's very easy to use. And I'm doubling this recipe to make sure this crowd all gets um, a couple of bites at least of this wonderful oatmeal. And the other thing, I said I wanted to know who I'm cooking for. I need to know how many of you um, have, sometimes we have other food allergies when we have one, you know? And so if, if you need dairy-free today, would you just raise your hand for me? Okay, let me get my servers to watch carefully, okay? So y'all see, I don't see anybody on this side of the room. I see four over here. Have I got everybody that needs dairy-free? Okay. Awesome. And uh, anybody that cannot tolerate eggs? Okay. You see that hand? Oh, and another one back there. Okay. All right. So I'm going to serve up, don't let me forget now, before I start pouring eggs in um, on the oatmeal, I'm going to serve yours before I put the eggs and the brown sugar in, but you can have the sucanat, uh on yours individually, okay? So that's what we'll do. It was, it's very convenient and thoughtful of y'all to sit together over there. That's going to be, <laughs> that's going to help our servers know where to go. All right. And then I have a display for you down front that uh, someone else was uh, gracious and did for us. Um, that is going to contain lots of great things, primarily everything we're using today in class and what we're cooking and serving to you and things that I think will be helpful to you. That's our, our waffle maker telling us it's hot and ready to go, in case you're wondering. We're not about to dive in our submarine or anything. Um, so I encourage you to check out that display. And you know, once class is over and um, the folks have dispersed, you know, 15, 20 minutes after class, you can shop off of this table if you if it would be convenient for you. And then we also have some things uh, also conveniently set up right next to the checkout, um, not to coerce you into buying anything, but so that you can find what you need if that's what you want to do. Okay. So, and my job today is your, is your cook and your guide or teacher. And so, there's no commission on sales. I'm not here to talk you into buying, but I will uh, warn you, you're gonna be tempted real good because these are excellent tools that we'll be using. All right, I think we got enough carrot to go. And I got my workout, my blood is pumping. <laughs> okay, and I forget how I do this. I forgot it had a bottom to it. There we go. Yes. And the cool thing is, on the inside, it's smooth. The blade's not going to get me, so I can reach in and rake out what clung to the sides. So I'm going to get this on a burner. And we'll get it started. And what's so great about, I know that you know that you can have oatmeal, but what's great about this recipe, I saw it for the first time when Sue did the Healthy Eating Simplified class. I believe it was week number three in that series of classes that she did at, where she talked about getting more fruits and vegetables into your diet. And so this is a way to get your vegetables into your breakfast even, you know? So it's a good idea. And the cool thing is the vitamin A in the carrot is more bioavailable after we cook it. So, you know, sometimes we think we have to eat everything raw to get all the nutrition and the enzymes. Nope, not so. Same with tomatoes. When you cook those, you get, um, 
let me open my recipes. What have I done with it? Here we go. Uh, when you cook those, the, the lycopene is more available to you. So I'm going to need some rice milk and some water. I'm using the rice. You could use dairy milk if you prefer, but I'm using the rice milk so that we keep it dairy free. And I'm doubling this, so I'm doing two cups of each. Then I've got some water preheated. This is the Clower kettle. And I've, I've forgotten the statistic of how fast it will boil those seven cups of water, but it is really quick. And so that's got that good and hot for us. Okay, and looking back, we are going to need a little bit of salt in that and a pinch of cinnamon. I really like the cinnamon, so I, I did a little bit more than a pinch. I hope that's okay. Now, I will tell you, I made the mistake of, excuse me, I did this one night in the crock pot, and I thought, oh, I'm just going to throw a couple of cinnamon sticks in because I love cinnamon. That'll be wonderful. But cinnamon sticks, as they cook for a long time like that, they actually make it bitter. And so that, that turned out to be a bad idea. So just in case you have that whim, don't run with it, okay? Sprinkle the ground stuff in this, in this recipe, and particularly if you simmer it a long, long time. Um, okay, and so then I have measured, since we're doubling it, a half a cup of raisins. Now, these are not sugar-sweetened raisins. Uh, I want you to check out our dried fruits. They're so much healthier. They're un unsulfured, and they're sweetened with maybe fruit juice. You know, so uh, check those out. I think you'll, I think you'll enjoy this. That'll be an opportunity to taste something. But uh, there's an array of options out there. Okay, and so I need something to stir with. I like this in these pots. That nice flat edge does a good job of catching everything on the bottom, and this is about to boil. And what, what you want to do is give the carrots just a, a couple of minutes head start before the oats go in. Technically, you could, you could do the, you know, you could get the oats in, but I find that what happens if you try to combine it too soon is that then your oatmeal is going to want to stick on the bottom maybe before it's fully cooked. And so just to just to alleviate that little issue, we're going to give that a moment of head start. And yeah, yeah, yes, let me show, I'm so glad you brought that up. She's asking about the salt that we used, and I listed it in your recipe as real salt. That actually is a brand name, Redmond's Real Salt. And I've got, let's see, it's right over here, I believe. Yeah, I have the bag I've been cooking from, though. Thank you. Um, this is the Redmond's Real Salt. And we can actually pass this around so that you can see the packaging. This has been mined out of the salt mines of Utah. It has never been, thank you, it has never been heat treated or bleached or refined. It's simply mined in its purest form and then uh, crushed to this consistency. Now we do sell it in a coarse grind and that way you can grind your own salt just like you do pepper and so we have the salt and pepper uh, grinders and I'll be using that in, in at least one of our recipes today. So you can buy it coarse ground if you prefer to do that but otherwise this is fine enough for you to keep in your salt shaker and I love the little pour spout because that enables you to fill your shaker right from the pour spout and then then you can keep you know one of these next to the stove for cooking uh, and it's just very convenient that way so it looks like we're just to the boiling state there and what I'm gonna do is grab a little bit bigger bowl actually a rather enormous bowl here we go make another choice 
And in here, I'll go ahead and get my eggs. And the idea is whisk these. <clears throat> we, we've measured so many recipes. I didn't have four or five whisk. There's one. We'll borrow it. So we're going to whisk those, and we're going to go ahead and add the brown sugar to them. And then we're going to temper it with the oats. So we've given our carrots a head start, and now the rolled oats are going in. And then I'm actually going to let these get completely done so that I can serve those who don't need eggs. And I'll just set a timer for five minutes. I want those to simmer a good five minutes or so. Okay. And you know, you can't put your eggs directly into that hot oatmeal or they're just going to be scrambled eggs, right? So we'll have to temper that. All right, so now this brown sugar that I'm using is called Sucanot which is shortened for sugarcane natural. And this is what we use in place of brown sugar in any and every recipe. And you use one cup for one cup. And this has a, you can see by the color that it's not, it's far less refined than brown sugar at the grocery store. In fact, if you're not aware, brown sugar at the grocery store is nothing more than white sugar with some molasses stirred in. And, you know, so then it's, then it's quite sticky. This is, this is above a, what I would call a simmer. We've, we've still got a rapid boil going, so excuse me, while we give it a stir. But this has such a rich, wonderful flavor, and we like the Sucanot for streusel toppings. Um, like I said, anywhere brown sugar is called for in a cookbook, you can replace it one for one with your Sucanot. But then it's great, you know, streusel topping on your coffee cake, uh, roll it up in your cinnamon rolls. Well, y'all might not be rolling up a lot of cinnamon rolls, but um, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to teach a gluten-free version of that. In the bread and rolls, we didn't do cinnamon rolls. It just occurred to me, so sorry. That, was, that might be a cruel teaser right there. All right. They didn't break, just in case you're wondering. All right, so, and do y'all need some rice milk over there? Did you get some already? Okay, we're gonna, put, we're gonna put some of the rice milk over with the coffees so that those of you who would like to do that can, if you wanna cream your coffee with a dairy-free. And then if I can have the balance of that back in the fridge here, Sharon, that will, um, I think I need it later for another recipe. At the moment, I don't recall. Awesome. All right, one more stir here. You know how oatmeal is, you, you don't go to the other end of the house and leave it unattended long term. Okay, I want to move on to the next breakfast recipe while that is simmering. So let me see if I can slide my tray within reach. And this, I named this after the coworker who uh, used to eat this for breakfast a lot of days. Once she discovered that uh, the wheat was one of her primary allergies and uh, she began to look for alternatives. This became one of her favorite breakfasts, and so it is named after my friend Melanie, and she combined three of the grains for a hot breakfast cereal, 
And if you want to talk about a powerhouse of nutrition and some great high energy breakfast food, this is it. So you guys are going to be pumped. I don't know if you'll be able to sit in your chair for all of class. You may have to, you know, get up and get moving. I don't know. But um, let me tell you what I'm doing here. And um, just a, a brief jump back onto your handout. At the fr before the recipes, uh, not, I don't want you to go there and look at it right now. I want you to study it later at home. But that information is covered in, in the bread and rolls class but I've given it to you so that you know uh, some of the nutritional strengths of all these great grains that are going to be in the pie crust that we're doing today and your breakfast cereal and all of that. So you do have some information, but you have to quick learn that uh, or study yourself on that. We're, we don't have the opportunity to cover that this morning. Um, secondly, you'll notice it's quite a long list of grains there. And so I want to spotlight the fact that all of those grains are in your uh, okay to eat list and they are really good nutritious grains. And then also all the beans are gluten free. So every dried bean is on your list, all the fruits and vegetables. So, you know, sometimes it, we can focus on what we can't have and get discouraged about that. But today I want you to be encouraged at the plethora of options that are available to you. And um, I hope that our recipes are going to be delicious and that you'll enjoy them and go away encouraged in that way. So again, we're using three different grains in the powerhouse grits. And we're, they're, we call them powerhouse grits because they're uh, a great, they have some similarities to that texture of the grits, but there's no corn involved. And I can't have corn, so this is a wonderful breakfast for me. Now, on the millet, I'm going to uh, pulse that in a dry blender. I'm using our TriBest personal blender. This is the small cup and the little dry blade. You can see that it's just two prongs and it's flat. The, what I call the wet blade is four pronged and, and sticks up. It's great for your smoothies and uh, salad dressings and other things. But we're just gonna pulse this for a few seconds. I just want kind of a coarse, grind. And doesn't that resemble grits? Uh, it really doesn't. It cooks up much like that. And then our other two grains are quinoa and amaranth. And I better get some water in the pot, hadn't I? So the amaranth we use exactly as is. It's a very small grain. It has a unique um, flavor that, that I really like. I really like it as a flower in certain things and I also let me get this real hot here we go um, I like it as a flour you know as a portion of bread and rolls but it has a, it has sort of a, a pungent some people say pungent spicy some people say nutty flavor but it just it has a warm unique flavor and and I like that so we're going to whisk this in and I is there a spare whisk anywhere now I, she brought me one while I wasn't looking didn't she? awesome Maggie thank you for anticipating my needs there okay so it's gonna take a moment for our water to boil I need to tell you about the quinoa the quinoa that we sell is it's unrefined and untreated so quinoa naturally has a resin on the exterior known as saponin. And before you boil it, you want to rinse that resin off it, because it's actually used in soap making in some other regions. And so it has a bitter soapy taste. And so we've, we've rinsed this through a very tightly woven sieve. It takes usually two and a half, three minutes of rinsing before it stops bubbling. And once the water runs clear, the water is not going to have a color, but once the grain stops bubbling, then the soap is rinsed off. Okay, and it's you know it's a natural resin. Uh, it's and so you don't rinse this and then put it in your mill, mind you. Everybody understand that? Nothing wet, oily, stickier ever goes in the mill. But you'll rinse it before you use it in your recipes, and so you're going to see us use it more than once today. 
healthy. And I will tell you that I have measured half a cup each. This is a recipe that's in portions. So you can't, depending on how much of it you want at one time, uh, I like to make enough for like three breakfasts at a time. So I generally, for just me, uh, I may only need one third cup of each grain, that's gonna equal one cup of grain, and then I need twice as much water. So today, I've done a half cup of each grain, and so how much water do I need? One and a half times two or three cups, okay? So, that, so I've got the three cups of water in here about to boil. I'm gonna go ahead and add my quinoa. And quinoa is really cool, you can see, let me just use my fingers. Now that it's wet, it doesn't want to release from our little cup. But quinoa, you can tell when it's done because it unwinds and it becomes translucent in color. And this breakfast cereal is going to need to simmer for about 20 minutes or so. And we're not going to put any butter or cinnamon or anything fancy in this one. I want you to taste the unadulterated grains with just a little bit of salt and pepper, okay? And I do, I do like to whisk the ground millet in so it doesn't stick together going in. And then I've got my salt handy. I can't hear you. Can you repeat that? If you put your millet through your mill, you're going to get millet flour, and it's going to be super fine. And if you want your, if you want it really creamy, that would be great to do. You'll still have, you'll still have the texture of the quinoa and the amaranth. So sure, that's fine. I just find it so much quicker to buzz it for a few seconds. Um, and then also I'm leaving it coarse intentionally so that it's more like grits. So, but yeah, you can definitely do that. And while we're on the subject, the millet makes wonderful first food for babies. When, when they get to that age, um, they're saying now about six months for, um, six months for cooked grains and, <clears throat> excuse me, but four months for vegetables, you know? So... Uh, I know because I have a new grandbaby. Yes, she was three months yesterday. And anyway, um, I, I know that was like the most important thing you'll hear today, but I want you to try to rein in your focus back to the hot cereal, okay? So just kidding. Um, anyway, the, it is a great first food for babies. And, oh, I gotta turn that down, I'm getting popped. Calm it down. And when you do that, especially for those first feedings, you would mill the flour, mill the millet into flour. And then you can make it, you know, as thin or as thick as you like. Those first feedings are really thin, you know, and then you add less water and it gets thicker. Okay, so this is ready to simmer and I, so it doesn't pop on me anymore. That one's gonna get a lid. And let's check our oats. Oh yeah, we're in good shape. So let me scoop a little serving. What would you like for me to serve the oats in? Let me scoop a couple of servings for our egg-free gals. And then we're gonna put the egg and the sucanat in. And Mia, you'll need to sprinkle some sucanat on for them, which I see we have some at the coffee serving over there. I believe I have a little ladle. Can I have a couple of those small cups, Mia? Yeah, that'll be great. Because I need to get the egg stuff in. All right. And then so she can find you, if you don't mind, and then if you'll just sprinkle some of the sucanat on top. If you'll... If you'll raise your hand for her, okay. Let me, that one looks a little stingy. Let's do, try to do better. Thank you. And then you can have, I'll give you this with it for serving. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna temper my eggs like we talked about with some of the oats before, excuse me, before they go in. And what, what this does for the oats, there we go, is you're adding, you're making it even more uh, power packed with your protein and then it gives it this wonderful creamy consistency that I think you'll enjoy. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit more in and then we're going in reverse. Back to the pan. All right, that ought to be sufficient. And then the other thing that helps with the process is that you go ahead and mix your sucanat in with the eggs. That keeps them from congealing and looking like scrambled eggs once they hit the pot too. I can smell this. I hope you love it or at least really like it and enjoy it, right? <laughs> Taste is one of those things where, okay, okay. Let me get, I, I hear we've had a few folks join us a few minutes late and so we need to know whether you need dairy free or egg free. So let's, if you'll just, let's just do show of hands all over again if you, if you will help us out with that. So if you need dairy free, okay, two, three, four, five, six, okay, and if you need egg free, one, two, three. All right, y'all got it over there? This has no dairy. I scooped out for the two egg free I knew about, I'm sorry. Um, I scooped out for the egg free I knew about in advance. I apologize, I missed one of you. Okay, but this is, this is ready to go. So Mia, let me transfer it right here for you. And if you wanna check right here for a lid and we'll keep that warm for a moment so you can <clears throat> serve all of this, excuse me. <clears throat> And then I'm going to give you this scoop as well, dear. All right. Now, moving, moving right along. I want to check this just at to stir it, the high heat spatulas, oh yeah. Can you see the consistency of that? And it's still boiling, I think I'm gonna go all the way to the lowest power. And by the way, these Fissler um, Cook Star, what do we call these heating elements? I for, I'm sorry, I'm fumbling for the whole name but these they get hot instantly and then they also cool off instantly so this one that I just turned off I could actually put my hand there or pick it up and put it away right this second I'm not putting it away because I'm using it again but I like how safe they are and how quick they heat up and cool off all right there we go got that stirring and going uh, let me set a timer for this to simmer a little while longer and then we'll serve it up to you. And I did promise you a little salt and pepper in it. Did I put any salt in this? I think I did put a little bit, didn't I? I had pre-measured my salt, but I didn't give you any pepper. So we'll do that. Since your oatmeal's a little sweet, we'll stay on the savory side. And then again, like I said, I really want you to Try this just so you can taste the grains. Do you have a question? Uh, okay, it simmers for about 20 minutes. 
so you'll have your three minutes rinse. You'll have three minutes to rinse your quinoa and you know a couple of minutes to measure everything out. Um, so you know you're probably looking at 25 to 30 minutes total preparation. No, I don't think you can do this in the microwave for the initial cook. But what I would recommend is cook cook more than you need for today's breakfast. You know, double, triple what you're going to need. And it holds well in the refrigerator. And then, but I do find when I pull it out to warm it in the microwave, if I'm going to do that, um, you know, if it's a big, if I'm going to do the whole batch, I just put it in the pan, add some water, and simmer it on the stove for a few minutes. But if you want individual servings in the microwave, absolutely you can do that. Um, you know, you can even pre-portion it in their bowls if you want to. But when you do that, when it comes out of the fridge, you'll have to add some more water to it, or you can add water before you put it in the fridge and just make it kind of soupy, because it, it's going to absorb more water. It'll get thicker as it stays in the fridge. So again, let me set this timer while I'm thinking of it. And we'll, uh-huh, go ahead. Well, the only thing about pre-mixing all three is you treat each one slightly differently. So I, I have not done that because I need to rinse the quinoa, I'm going to grind the millet, and I'm going to use the amaranth hole. So, well, not much ahead of time because not, not much ahead of time because of oxidation. You're, you're, losing, you're losing vitamins and nutrition to the air. And so you don't, you don't want to mill your flour up ahead of time and let it sit around for days, and you don't want to grind your grains for the cereal either. Same, same thing. So um, again, that's, that's well covered in, in the bread and rolls. So I won't go into much, any more detail, but, but um, just trust me. That, that you don't want to do that. My dishcloth keeps disappearing. Let me get another. All right. I just want to get rid of the sticky spot on my mat here. <clears throat> and then we're going right to our next breakfast offering, which is banana nut, uh, banana nut muffins. Don't know why that feels like a tongue twister today, but I do want to ask. Uh, this calls for chopped walnuts, which we put in the batter right at the very end. So, does anybody have an allergy to that? Y'all okay with me? Is everybody okay with me putting the nuts in the batter? Okay, it's no trouble to scoop some out ahead if you just don't you don't care for it. You don't have to be allergic. You just don't want them. Everybody, okay, we're going with the nuts then. I like it. We are the nuts, right? <laughs> right? We tease and say we're Lucy and Ethel all the time. We have a good time. You know, whether it all turns out or not, that's another question, but we have a good time. Okay, so I've got bananas I need to peel, and let me get a, here's my cup. Now, since I'm, um, Doing, since these were kind of small bananas, I'm going to estimate that I may need a little bit more than what it says here. Or not that I need more, but that it'll take more bananas to yield that. All right, so I'm going to use the try best for this job as well. And it does a wonderful job of pureeing your bananas. And you can have complete control over how, uh, how smooth you puree them. You know, if you like, if you still want some, some nice chunks, little chunks of banana in your muffin, then you just don't pulse it as long, okay? So you have complete control there. But in order for the bananas to grind up, you, get, you need some liquid, you need something, a, a wet part of the recipe. And so what I'm going to do is put my eggs in as the liquid, and then that's going to whip them and help them to be, have a nice fluffy texture. 
and once we pulse it a little, I'll be able to get some more banana in. But right now we're moving on to the egg cracking phase, okay? So I'm going to do two eggs here. And we're actually going to mix these up in the assistant. But this is a little preliminary step we're going to do. So wet blade. My try best. This this coming out over and over. Yes, question? Oh, absolutely, you can replace the eggs. Um, I have an egg replacer, a page with three great egg replacer recipes on it. Uh, I tend to use the flaxseed binder more than anything, but you definitely can use any of those egg replacers and it should turn out just great. Not only this recipe, but just any recipe you want. And you'll have three options. I don't think I gave that to you in the handout, but it is something that we can print We'll print several up at the end of class, and uh, if, if we don't get to it or we forget, that's something I can email to you as an attachment. So just email us. There's a Contact Us button at our website for you to use. See how quickly it pulls those in. Now, before it gets pureed too much, I wanted to add a little more banana because these are small. And so I need a little more than two because I would classify these as small, not medium. Just, my, just a matter of opinion. And I'm measuring very carefully, as you see. And there's a little spot on that that I don't want to use. All righty. So we're going to go again. That's plenty. We're good to go. And I just find that so much quicker and easier than doing the mash method. You know what I mean? Although it's a good workout. Never far from the mini blender. Okay, so before we pull out the big mixer, I do need to combine my dry ingredients. So that's what this bowl is for. I've got my brown rice flour blend. So if you're looking at your handout, I don't want to confuse you with that. I want you to understand I'm giving you a flour blend recipe that you can use in other places. Uh, there's another flour blend recipe at the back, which is the one I'll use in the pie crust, I believe. And, but this one works great. If you, if you have any gluten-free recipes that call for sorghum flour, uh, this can serve as a replacement for that. And it can just, any, anywhere where you need all-purpose flour, this will work. So I just thought it was a great, easy mix-up flour blend that you would like to have on hand. So I'm putting my brown rice flour blend in the bowl, and then I've got some other dry ingredients that need to go in. And that is baking powder, xanthan gum, Xanthan gum is what replaces the gluten in your recipes. It is what enables those baked goods to hold together and have some structure. So it's, it's a really important ingredient. Tiny bit, a little goes a long way. If you get heavy handed with your xanthan gum, your baked goods will shrink in the days after they're made. They just get tighter and tighter. It's interesting, <laughs> but yeah, so you don't wanna do that, right? Heads up, don't do that. So measure your xanthan gum very carefully because it does make a difference. Okay, so I've got, I put the cinnamon in, xanthan gum, salt, and then I'm do, this other stuff is going in the mixer. And I just want to use my dry whisk. Is this a dry whisk? Or did I stick it in the grits? Yeah, this one has that on it, which by the way, we need to stir. Oh yeah. Let me let that hold the lid for me. That's a cool thing about the, the design of this Fissler pan is you don't have to find a place to put your hot lid. It will hold it for you. 
And I've actually let them stick just a little bit on the bottom. This is where these come in really handy. They're made specifically for the Fissler pan. And so it just does a good job of getting the bottom of the pan. Had I been stirring with it, I probably wouldn't have let it stick. And then you'll notice the side of that is curved, and so it does a great job of scraping the edge of the pan and just getting at all of it. Okay, and so I think our timer's about to buzz on this. And you can see that, you know, this is a nice thick consistency. If I actually am gonna thin them just a little bit, and you know, when you're at home making your own, you can make them as thick or as thin as you like. I'm going to make them for you the way I like to eat mine, because I don't know your opinion yet. But, but just do know that you can, you can make them as thick or as thin as you like, within reason. Oh yeah, that's great. And it's nice with a little dollop of butter on top, but I'm like I said, I'm not even going to do that today. I just really want you to get the unadulterated grain. <laughs> Very funny. Is that? I think I think it beeped because I touched it. It still says it has 30 seconds. Anyway, we'll turn that one off. So, so I don't interrupt myself again. I'm going to go ahead and give y'all the powerhouse grits. Now, back to this. I do have a dry whisk. And so I just want to combine the flour, which is going to go into the mixer in a moment. And this, do y'all know what I'm making here? Did I tell you? The banana muffins. Banana nut muffins. Okay, do you want this for serving, since I've already got grits all over it? Nope. In the brown rice flour blend, yes. Yes. Yeah, now you can, if potato starch is an issue, if you have tummy trouble with when you have potato starch, I would replace that with arrowroot, okay? That's a really good replacer, and it's actually the easiest starch to digest. One yes, one for one, one for one. Just about any recipe. The only place where you can't, where you have to be careful with your arrowroot is if you're thickening something with it, you're making gravy or a sauce of some kind. Wait until the last couple of minutes of cooking, and add some water to your arrowroot and then add it in and you know whisk it in and then just let it simmer for a minute or so. If you let it simmer you know five, ten, fifteen minutes uh, you might be okay on five but I would I don't even aim for that but but you let it simmer too long and it just breaks back down so that's the only thing. It's wonderful as a thickener you just can't put it in too soon. But in your other recipes, baking and so forth, absolutely, you can just replace it one for one anywhere. Okay, so let me pull my mixer over. This is the Verona Assistant. And it is and has always been our all-time favorite mixer. There we go got the mill on top of my cord or I had the mill on top of my cord. All right, I'm going to put it facing you. And let me remind myself, the coconut oil is going in um, and I'm going to beat it with my honey granules and my liquid honey. We're using both. The, I want to show you the honey granules. Let me get this in. And the warehouse is a little bit cool, so you can see how solid the coconut oil is. We're going to 
we're going to let the mixer whip it into the sugars for us. But it's still, you saw, I mean, it's solid, but it's not impossible for me to handle. And this is the coconut, this is extra virgin coconut oil. It is sweet, it is wonderful, and it is your solid oil. So um, at a certain, once I think it reaches 70, 76 or 77, somewhere right in there, it, it will soften to liquid stage. And so it looks like a clear liquid in the jar. But, you know, so you want to store it at room temperature for ease of use, and you can use it to replace the hydrogenated junk that is sometimes called for in recipes. You could also use it to replace butter if, if you just wanted to or you ran out of butter or that's something that you can't have, um, your dairy allergy maybe. So that I find that very helpful. Um, let me get the honey granules open. I want to show you that real quick. You see how this is your blonde white sugar granular sweetener, uh, white sugar replacement, excuse me. This, this is what we replace white with, um, okay, rewind. Any recipe that calls for white sugar, we don't use white sugar at all. And you'll find Sue's recipe collection calls for no white sugar, no white flour. So in just a few places where honey doesn't work, we're going to use this as our granular sweetener. A good example would be cookies. In order to get that crispy edge and chewy center, you need a granular sweetener. You can make your cookies with honey, but you're going to get mini cakes. You know, it just, it just changes the texture pretty dramatically. So that goes in, and uh, similar to the sucanat with the brown sugar, this replaces white sugar in your recipes one for one. Question? Okay, um, you're asking about powdering the sucanat with honey. I have good news for you. We now carry it in the pail already powdered. So we have been for years powdering our own for, you know, if we were do icing a birthday cake or, uh, or what have you, we've been powdering our own in the Tribes or the Mega Blend. Uh, now you actually can purchase it already powdered. And so it, you measure it like powdered, you measure that like powdered sugar. And uh, it, does, it does measure a little bit differently than than the regular, you know, it um, it settles more, so it is. It's a little bit different measure. So measure it like you would powdered sugar. But yeah, that's that's good news. It saves you some time and and trouble. All right, I'm going to keep that. Go ahead and slide this over. Okay, what, what I'm going to do is check my mixer speed before I turn it on. Uh, it's a bad idea to have this powerful mixer on high speed when you first turn it on with a, just a few things in the bottom, especially liquids, because you'll have them in your hair and on the roof, uh, the ceiling, whatever. So I'm going to have it on low speed. And then my timer knob and my on-off switch are the same knob. I've got up to 12 minutes delay timer there. And I want you to notice how, are we in your view? I want you to notice how the roller's resting against the side of the bowl. The bowl is turning the roller right now. The scraper constantly scrapes the side of the bowl for you, so you never have to stop and do that. Now you notice we've got, because this is resting against the side of the bowl, I've got a lump of coconut oil in the center. This is a spring-loaded arm. I can move it back and forth. It can pick up what's in there. I can also move it slightly off the side and tighten up my tension knob back here. Now the arm is free to move this way, but it's not going to push my ingredients up and out the side of the bowl. So this is where I want it. We're kind of, we want to cream these ingredients. So 
We're not going to stay on the lowest speed. Let's see what she can do. There we go. So now we're going to alternately add our flour and our wet mixture. We'll get a little bit of that in. And remember, that's a blend of all the dry ingredients combined. And this is the eggs and the banana. Put some of that in. And I'm going to begin and end with flour here. Make sure I'm picking that up. And I think we have given it our obligatory 30 seconds. So I'm going to go back to a lower speed as a courtesy to myself and or Sharon. There we go. And now we can, I can actually let the mixer stir the walnuts in for me since everybody's okay with the nuts. We'll go ahead and add those. And then I have it on low, which is all I need just for stir, okay? And then we'll just pick up those. There we go. And now we're just going to scoop using a cookie scoop into the mini muffin liners. You can, the recipe is written for full size muffins, but it's convenient and pretty service for you that I do the mini. So that's what I've chosen today. Thank you, dear. So push the spring loaded arm away from you, release the tension a little bit, and then you can get the roller out of the way. Well, hold on. There we go. And then the, the mixer actually comes with a little tool that will act like your finger on these little grooves. And so you don't have to lose any batter on the roller. And then you can just rinse that. Oh, there went a chunk of coconut oil. I'm going to have to work on that. I was, I was talking and not looking down in the bowl. Okay, and then I'm going to use this scraper again to, because the curve of that perfectly fits the side of my big stainless steel open bowl. So when you, if you're scraping all the batter out into a cake pan, for example, that's going to easily get it all off the side of the bowl for you. So highly recommend this little tool, but you don't have to get it separately. It comes right in with the mixer. Okay. And then here is our scraper. All right. So let's do the plan B here. And I'm going to take my whisk to that little dab of coconut oil. It really wouldn't hurt you if you got a bite of coconut oil, but because it's good, it tastes good, <laughs> and it's good for you. This is a wonderful fat that we need. Okay, I think we're I think we're good to go. I'll reserve that in case they need it. They're going to be scooping some of the muffins for me. So. With the cookie scoop, it's just the perfect size for these little mini muffins. And I did, oh, I'm hung up. Okay, that's not what it's supposed to do, as you might have guessed. Sharon, do you have yours? 
I think I don't know what happened to mine, but I'm having a malfunction. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so this this is the action I'm looking for, and I don't know what I did to that one, but it's no longer happy with me. Okay, so you can see the cookie scoop is going to perfectly fill our little mini muffins, and I've lined these. I find with gluten-free baking that the little muffin liners are very handy, not only for um, added structure after you've taken them out of the pan, but also keeping the moisture in. So, you know, if you don't eat them right away after they're baked. And these are wonderful fresh out of the oven. We're going to serve them to you warm today. Thank you. And then I want to give Sharon this opportunity to come on up. We are going to, yeah, you do that. I'm going to introduce you. Um, so I, I will go ahead and do one of my desserts, and then we'll have you. Okay. All right. So in, in preparation, you might need this when you get toward the end of the bowl. So, Okay. In preparation for dessert at the end of class, we need to do... We need to get those started now. So I know it's out of order, but if you'll forgive me for going out of order, you'll actually get to eat the dessert, not just watch me make it, okay? So that might be preferable for most of us. So let's see. I will actually scoot the... I'm going to scoot this back here and we'll just bring it right back when we need it. And I think we will start with strawberry cheesecake. Anybody a fan? All right. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> okay, what about, what about the, my fellow chocolate lovers? Fudge pie? Yeah. We're going there next. We could do that first, but I've already told you we're doing the cheesecake, so cheesecake it is. Okay. Yes. You do. Um, she's asking, how do, how do we do brown rice flour? Well, I don't want you to buy already made brown rice flour. I want you to mill your own brown rice. And I mean, you could get fancy and do some of the great rice blends, or you can just use our brown rice or organic brown rice. And I, that's what I did. I used our organic brown rice that we sell in bulk. And that you can get that from a two pound bag to a one gallon pail, which is this size, uh, or the six gallon bucket, which is what's stacked over here. Okay, so, but I would say on brown rice and your oats, because those have a high oil content that can go rancid over the months, that, <clears throat> excuse me, I would recommend that you buy no more than a six month, six month, eight month, eight month supply to just have on hand. Okay, so let's see what we need for our cheesecake. I've actually, this recipe is called Easy No Bake Cheesecake, and it's found in this cookbook. And so I've got my cookbook open and I need to get the mega blend out. The first thing we're going to do is make our crust. The crust is flourless and the crust is delicious if I might say so. All right, so let's see, do I this may be way up top where I cannot reach it, so. I don't know if you can reach it. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a bowl. I need Mega Blend. Uh, well, I've got the base, but I need a. There we go. Thank you. All right. So I'm actually going to use the Mega Blend both for the crust and for the filling of this. And here's the rest of my ingredients. All right. 
So hopefully I have a base and a top that go together. I think so. We had, we had, I think we had more than one version at some time, you know, like the preliminary that came in or, or I don't know. Anyway, so hopefully I've got the right thing here. So here it is with the blade inside. The Mega Blend has a mill function, and that mill function is what you're able to use to, to uh, grind your gluten-free rolled oats. The Bob, I'm pointing where I had a bag. Here we are. Um, Bob's, Bob's certified gluten-free rolled oats. You can mill this in the Mega Blender into an oat flour. If you have celiac disease and cannot come in contact with a speck of gluten, then these are the oats you want to use. If you are just setting gluten aside for a season, trying to heal the gut, then you probably are just fine with our rolled oats. Um, I saw a hand over here. Yes, yes, we do, we do. We do carry those along with, oh good, she's going to let you see that package. Yes? Yeah, with the letter that came here. Uh huh. Right, about the spelt? Yes. She said that you all are planting a gluten-free hopper. Yes. On your oats now, in their face. Is that right? We have a dedicated hopper for the gluten-free grains and uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. um, the and so but what you need to know is the, although the oats go in the you know go through the gluten-free hopper and you know even though all the grains that go through that hopper are gluten-free we still blow it out between each different kind of grain um, but they're not sort of they're not inspected and tested and certified okay so that's the difference all right, so what I just put in are dates. Um, I, I just, you know, sliced them down the middle and pulled the pit out and measured my dates. And now these are walnuts. You could also do this with pecans. So when pecans are in season, um, you have that option as well. Today, I, that walnuts is what I had on hand in the freezer. That's what I measured out yesterday, okay? Um, I want you to check. We're we're gonna uh, we're gonna check the mini muffins early. Uh, I find that they get ready quicker than the full size, and so let's check them in 15 minutes. If you want to set one of those, if you leave me one, you can take one with you. Thank you. All right. So I've got my lid on, and I'm actually gonna put this on pulp to start. And every time you take your finger away, it's going to stop that action. Now, it's going to need to work for a little bit. So let's try the blend, and we're just going to watch it closely. What I want it to do is chop fine and then start to hang on to one another. Uh, it'll almost look like, um, like pie crust dough or something. Does that make sense? So keep an eye on it with me. There we go. And I'm wondering, I, I'm, okay. And I find that, let me stop that so we can get a look at it. I'm gonna take the top off and we'll peek. Okay, that's getting a nice consistency and it's gonna hold together when I put it in the base of my cheesecake pan. So the, the natural oils of the walnut or the pecan will actually um, not stick to the base of your pan badly. So uh, I'm going to omit spraying this. And we're just going to press it into the bottom. And this looks like a lot of crust. So you can use you can use your fingers or you can use a spatula. And the idea is just to press it sufficiently that it sticks together well and forms a nice crust. 
And the cool thing about it is the dates are sweetening the crust. You know, all this is just good nutritious food, which is that's what you're gonna find about the ingredients and the cooking methods in what the Bible says about healthy eating, about healthy living cookbook. And this is, we don't bake this dessert. This is going to go into the freezer for a little while and get nice and chilled. And then we will serve it up. We may as well use it all. Let me pull that blade out. Since I'm going to use it, I'm about to reuse it for the filling. I don't want a lot of chunks in that. We want that contrast of texture and color. So your dates are sweetening this crust and holding it together. They're nice and sticky. All right. We'll let that wait patiently while we get the middle ready. And my blade better go back in first. It's always a bad idea to pour your ingredients in and then try to get your blade in. I've tried that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate I appreciate that confession. I'm not the only one who's ever done that. Makes me feel good. Yeah. So in this bowl, I have my uh, cream cheese, and I have used the Neuchatel. It's just, it's lower fat, and it's, uh, it gets real creamy and soft. I just like the texture of it. You can use whatever kind of cream cheese you prefer. Okay, but that's what's in here, just FYI. And then this is organic, plain yogurt. We sell yogurt makers. We have yogurt starter. You can make your own at home inexpensively. Um, and so, you know, if you want to do that, then you can use your own, of course, in this. But it's wonderful that this has the yogurt in it and you're getting those great live cultures um, into the gut. And so bear in mind that uh, oftentimes when we've developed food allergies, the reason, one, one big reason for that uh, can be, whoop, about to drop that whole thing. It can be our uh, lack of nutrition in, in what we have been eating. If we're eating the standard American diet, then uh, <clears throat> we can expect to have some issues, some tummy issues. But the, where I was headed with that is, um, where was I headed with that? Yeah, um, getting those good live cultures in. And I was just going to tell you that when we made your waffles earlier, and that same recipe can be used for pancakes too, but when we made those, we used kefir that we made here ourselves. And we, we carry some kefir starter. It's six packets in one package. You'll find it in the refrigerator case out front. Let me just show you what the package looks like. And if you can, <coughs> excuse me, if you can measure a quart of milk or your milk substitute, whatever that may be, if you can measure a quart of milk and stir, then you can make kefir. So it's really simple and easy to do. So this is what the package looks like. We made that kefir here ourselves. It has some wonderful, wonderful uh, strains of good bacteria in it and kefir and yogurt are both good for you but the difference is the bacteria in kefir can actually repopulate your tummy so if you have had a round of antibiotics um, then that has killed both the good and the bad bacteria in the gut and so you really need to make a focused conscious effort to replace that good bacteria. And so this will do that for you. Um, and we have some other products. I actually um, highlighted the Firm Plus 
in the bread and rolls class, we did a smoothie at the beginning. So I uh, want to, again, encourage you, see that video if you have not attended that class. There's just so much information in there that I can't repeat today. Okay, so right now I have my plain yogurt and the cream cheese in there. So I need a teaspoon of vanilla and some maple syrup. I'm gonna use our flip spoon. This one is flipped to the half teaspoon, so I'm gonna flip it to the teaspoon. And then on this side, you've got a tablespoon, or with, when you flip it, it's one and a half, it's a half tablespoon, which is equal to one and a half teaspoons. So cool, it's just easy to use. So there's my teaspoon of vanilla. And this, you'll also find this out in the store. And the vanilla is the only one, we have an array of great, um, a variety of these. The, the vanilla, I think it's, might be the only one that comes also in a much bigger bar, bottle. It's, it's one of the most popular. And then I need how much maple syrup? Okay, it calls for a fourth cup of maple syrup, I am going to actually use the maple flavored agave. And four tablespoons is a fourth of a cup, so I'm gonna use our little mini angled measuring cup. Love these. You can, whether it's the, the large ones all the way up to the four cup size or this little mini, you can sit it on the counter and without doing this number, you can see how much is in there, so it's just convenient. And so that this will pour for me, I'm gonna just give it a light spray of cooking spray. And this has no flour in it, no flour. Uh, be careful as a gluten-free patient that you check your cooking spray before you buy it because you know some are made with flour in them so that they are uh, greasing and flouring the pan at the same time and you would need to avoid that kind. Do you have some more maple agave over there? I'm just, I only have three tablespoons and I need four. Thank you. To the rescue. And this is what we served with our chocolate chip waffles this morning, this and the vanilla. Um, any comments about what you tried? Tell me, tell me what you thought about uh, that waffle recipe. Did you like the flavor and the texture? Yes? Okay. Good, good. Now, even uh, the folks who don't need gluten-free love the rice and millet pancakes. Sue makes those all the time for lots of different occasions. And it's, you know, it's, it's convenient that they're also gluten-free, but that's, that wasn't the original purpose and intent. They were just good. So, and we hope that, we hope that today as you try the food that, that um, it will just taste good and you won't be thinking about being confined to your list. Okay, and let me make sure before I put this in that it all goes in. I have put my strawberry all fruit in with my strawberries, and I think I put it all in. Oh, it wants me to stir that in gently by, by hand, not obliterate it. Okay, I'm so glad I checked. Would y'all have stopped me? Are you reading the recipes? Please do. Oh, that's right, that's right. Because, because we're doing four, like four or five recipes out of that recipe collection, I did not reprint all those. They would have allowed me to print one for you, but I'm, I, you know, that would be just so rude and to uh, print four or five of the recipes. So I'm not going to do that, but they're right over there. Okay, so what we want to do is blend this, smooth it out. That's probably sufficient, but let me check. Oh, there we go. Beauty treatment. Oh my goodness. 
It smells so good. Maybe it's the vanilla and that maple agave, but it smells good. Or as my little grandson would say, gooid. Gooid, it smells gooid. All right, we're gonna need that again a time or two, I, if, if memory serves. And so let me stir this in. I really want to put this in a bowl first. Oh, I see some lumps. All right, I take that back. We're going, we're going back. All right, luckily, we're only talking about adding two seconds to our prep time here, so. I got a little, got a little too uh, anxious there, huh? All right, I'm just gonna get that lid right back on. We'll give it just a couple more seconds. And that's the kind of thing, it's not gonna hurt if you have a couple of lumps, but I want it to be pretty and nice for y'all, so. And we're gonna do it right. Okay, so let's repeat that. Try to keep that blade from escaping. And we want all that good stuff. And we have, we've just sliced the strawberries and what you see on top is that all fruit spread. It has no sugar added. It's sweetened with the fruit juice, which I think it has some pear juice in it. But there's definitely no corn syrup or artificial color sweetener stuff in there. And you can see how easy this is. If you weren't talking while you were doing it, you'd have this mixed up so, so quick. Now I'm going to just uh, stir it and fold it to try to make sure my fruit spread gets distributed because I had it just kind of piled on top of the strawberries. And then it goes right in over this delicious crust. And we're just gonna run it into the freezer long enough to let it set up a little bit. And then we're gonna serve it to you after you've had your lupper. That's lunch and supper run together. My, my sweet aunt, Lord rest her soul, used to say that and it's just one of my memories of somebody that was so good to me when I was little. Okay, here we go. Yum, I could just sit down and eat it with a spoon at this stage. So if you really can't wait, nothing in here needs to cook. Dive in. Sit back down. Somebody's coming this way. All right, I'm gonna wipe that off. And if I could get one of you ladies to, I've got some plastic wrap down here. If you'll just cover it and then find a place in that rear freezer. I know I don't have any right here. Mm -hmm. It needs to go in the freezer and here's some, do you have plastic wrap over there too? If not, I've got some right here. Okay, now but while I'm thinking of it, uh, before we start our pie, I need to start some water to boil for pasta that we're gonna do. And I think this is good hot. I'll go ahead and use this, which is still warm from earlier, and I'm gonna add some more to my clover kettle. We're gonna be boiling some rice pasta and making an Italian dish for you. Rice 
rice. I'll show you the package here in a sec. Okay, so I'm going to press the button, and if you can just keep an eye on that, you'll see this has six cups of water in it, and it will just be a few minutes before it is to a rapid boil. And once that happens, I'll add it to this. Okay, Will you, yeah, would you check the muffins for us? They're starting to smell very good. They need to spring back. I think they need a moment. Oh, is it springing? Yeah, All right, they're ready. Yeah, they're go, go, go. Go, go, go. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay, let me get my bearings on what we want, where we are in the process here. Uh, I know next on our agenda is uh, the are the other two des desserts and so I will you want me to go ahead and do we can do either one um, do you want to get those out and those should rest for five minutes and then come out of the muffin pan and so what I'll do is go ahead and get your fudge pies going um, and I will need Maggie, if you can hear me, dear, I need the Mega Blend, which you're probably already working on right now. I need that uh, cup again. So I'm going to bring that back out, and I'll get the fudge pie ingredients over here. Here we go. And I've got my color cups to remind me that I need eggs. Now, the pie crust that we're making yields two crusts. The pie yields one pie. So I'm doubling the pie recipe. And keep an eye on me that I remember to double every ingredient. Okay, that's, there's where your trouble can be, or my trouble. All right, so I'm going to use this pan. And I've got my sucanat hidden inside. Not literally hidden, but that's where it fits. Okay, and I need four eggs. So here's three, four. There we go. And then we're, we've got two steps going on here. We have the crust that we're going to make up, which I think you will really enjoy. This, this was a wheat flour crust uh, in an old church cookbook that I had at home that I've converted for gluten-free and but it gets rave reviews from employees and customers who don't need to eat gluten-free so I hope that that means that you will um, enjoy it and like it too let's see I've got my butter here okay um, is there water in that kettle too? Will you heat it up? Okay, and I've got, let me get, I'm going to need another large pan for the sauce as soon as we get beyond, as soon as I get the pasta boiled. So I'll just have that at the handy while I'm thinking of it because our sauce simmers for an hour, so I don't want to start it too late. Now, Maggie, I need the Mega Blend um, cup if, when it's available. Okay, and so let me switch, flip back here to the pie recipe. And I want to tell you about my sweet friend, Susanna. She was a bridesmaid in my daughter's wedding and she is a real life missionary and um, we get so tickled at her she she says she has the ministry of chocolate pie and so when someone has a need thank you so much when someone has a need um, or a crisis that it's something that she likes to take over uh, just to say I love you I'm thinking about you and so I want that to be my message to you as you receive this pie today um, it almost makes me emotional to talk about that, but um, she's just a great gal.
So I've got in our crust a certain Food Network star would be so proud of me today for making this crust, you see? And let me see if I've got just a little knife. I really like these knives, the Kuhn Rakan. They have, because of the coating on them, what you're slicing, if it were cheese or butter or, che or um, cream cheese, all that kind of stuff, it's, it doesn't stick to it so much. So it's really easy to slice that. And you see how, you know, normally I'm pulling the butter back off my knife, but I don't have that trouble with this. So we're going to get the butter in, and I've got my flour over here. Sure, sure. You can replace butter with the extra virgin coconut oil because it also is a solid fat, and it's a good healthy fat like we mentioned before. So just one for one, the very same proportion. And so keep in mind that one stick of butter is a half a cup, and that will help you with your measurements. All right. So don't have to be real um, careful with your dicing up of your butter because the Mega Blend is going to take care of that for me. But I do want it in pieces. All right, little lid. <clears throat> and so since I'm, remember I'm doubling, well, I'm not doubling the pie crust. I'm not doubling the pie crust. It already makes two. Thinking out loud, y'all keep me straight. But so it calls for two and a half sticks from the get-go. Now, you need to keep an eye on how much salt goes in here. So depending on whether you're using salted or unsalted butter, you can adjust or even omit the salt called for, okay? So just keep that in mind that you can um, monitor that. And so I've got all my butter in, and then this is the flour blend. And for this baking mix, I made the Food Philosophers gluten-free baking mix up and uh, it's just the one that I had tested the recipe with in the past and was confident in using again. Uh, I haven't tried it yet with the brown rice flour blend. Um, is, it, is it not on the last page of your handout? Okay, that's, I'm sorry, favorite gluten-free baking mix, yes. It's, that's my, uh, I started with theirs, with one by the name I mentioned, and I remade it the way I liked it, so. So now it has a new name, it's Favorite Baking Mix, because it's my alteration on theirs. Okay, so I'm getting my flour in, and I think before I get the balance of the flour in, I'll go ahead and just pulse it a time or two, so all that, but butter on the bottom, get some. When I'm not talking, I typically throw in some of the butter, throw in some of the flour, throw in some of the butter, you know, whatever. But <clears throat> I'm just going to pulse it a couple of times. There we go. And get some more flour in. And this actually makes, uh, it may be a little bit too much for the two crusts. You may have a little left over. And also you have some, um, what's the word I want? You, you have the opportunity here to decide how thick or thin you want your pie crust as well. So, all right, I have it on the blend setting right now. All right, I'm going to pause that and I'm going to take this lid out. It's basically incorporated. And now I'm going to go ahead and get some ice water. I, I'm going to measure a cup in here, but I'm going to stop adding ice water when the dough gets to the consistency I'm looking for. If you, if you add too much water, you're going to end up with dough that's a little too sticky for you to roll out and, and press into your pie shells. 
Okay, so I've got a cup, and this is nice chilled water, and it is, it is important that the butter be cold and the water be cold. Well, we'll spray those in a second. <clears throat> so I'm going to have it running while I add this, and I did not put the salt in, did I? But I thought I had it measured. There it is. Ah, I was hearing some, mm-hmm, here we go. So I'm going to have it running as I stream this in. And we probably won't need the entire cup, but we're watching for that. You can see it begin to change shape. And sometimes you actually have to stop and scrape the sides one time. But Whoa, I put it all in. All right. Let me be careful of my blade there. Okay. I'm surprised that I need it all, but I do. It appears I do. I may even need an extra drop or two. Okay. So I don't know if I was heavy handed on my flour. Or not. You know, when you deal with flour, yes, the humidity can, can change things. And we've, it's been really humid and now it is drier. But this, you just, you're going to have to watch for it. And it's almost there. It's almost to um, like a Play-Doh consistency. And so, in fact, as I stir it and get to the bottom where it's more moist, I'm thinking I may not want the rest of that water in there. I'll give it a sec. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and turn it out. So I'm going to move this out of the way. <clears throat> Do a little more moving than that, aren't I? Need to. Okay. And so I've got the brown rice flour blend on the bottom shelf. Can I have a little bit of that? I need to, fl no, I'm just going to sprinkle a little on my mat here. Thank you. So, scoot that out. Am I, where you can see. I'm going to just put down a little flour so it doesn't all stick to the mat. Don't want to get too heavy handed with that. Thought I heard my name. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this if you have a little bit left over and you have some little hands in the house, boy do they enjoy playing with it just like play doh. And you can see as I'm getting to the bottom, I'm getting, it's a little stickier, so. And they recommend that you make the pie dough up in advance and chill it for a little while. I have rolled it out. You know, if your butter is good and chilled and your water's good and chilled and you're in a big hurry, um, if it is of a texture that you can deal with, you can actually um, press it into your pie dishes right then. I have. I've done that. I've done it both ways. So, and then when you do refrigerate it, be careful not to leave it in the refrigerator too terribly long because then you have to let it sit um, out a little bit before it's not too hard to handle. Does that make sense? So, 
You could freeze this and pull it out later, absolutely. You could press it into pie pans or you could just shape it kind of in a disc, you know, where it's already in a little round, like a cheese round, a little, anyway. You could, you could pre-shape it a little bit or you could actually, if you've got the pans to spare, you could go ahead and do that. All right. And it just, and see, actually on the bottom it's a little bit moist. I'm going to go with a, what I just pulled out of the bottom. There we go. And so, see, I'm feeling like I could press this right in and do just fine. Sharon, could I borrow your hands for a moment? If you would spray the pie pans for me, and I'm going to start to press one and then I'll let Sharon or Mia get the other one into the pie pan because I want to start your meat sauce and let it simmer. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, what I'm about to do is only going to take a moment and then you be prepared because I'm calling on you. Um, I, I'm not sure. I need to. I better stick on track. Okay, so I'm just dividing this in half, and I may actually end up with more than what I need for that one shell there. And I'm just skipping right through the refrigerator and then roll it out stage. You you catch what I'm doing here. So I have deviated from the recipe. I am a rebel. You know, when I, um, when I used to sew, I considered the pattern a suggestion and then, you know, did my own thing after that too. So I don't know why I think I have to do that, but I, that's just, maybe, maybe I have a, a, a very slight creative streak. And oh yeah, this is going to be so much dough, I'm going to take some of this out. Question? I have not done it personally, but you absolutely could substitute the coconut oil for the butter. Not just here, but any recipe. Any recipe, that is a rule that you can live by. You can always use that coconut oil. Okay, a question in the back here, and then I'll come to you. This is a, I believe it's a nine inch. Yeah, you, it, it will be. Um, you have to be careful, like particularly in cookies. You can't melt the coconut oil and then cook with it because your cookies are going to run all over the pan. So um, if you're replacing butter, it does need to be in the solid state. Um, and I'm going to let you do the second one there. And I think this is too much dough. And I don't see, it doesn't look like anybody brought a... Yeah, I'm going to use that in the little pan there. And I'm going to give you this for your pie crust. Just going to roll it in flour. Okay, and I'm going to give you this whole mat. Okay. So, so if I can. And then if you'll just bring it back to me, I'm yep. going to fill it for you. Okay. You probably don't need that. You got it? Yep. Look at her go. Awesome. Okay. I think I may want to wash some of this off before I make the filling. I have really made a mess. Okay. And so obviously it's, it's a little bit easier to handle and you won't have it all over your hands if you chill it for a few minutes. But I just decided to forge ahead. And so also, also to show you that you can, if you're in a hurry, just go ahead. Go right ahead. You have my permission anyway. It's not what the recipe says, but you have my permission. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> well, you're safe, though, with the hot cereals, okay? 
You can have as much of that as you want, for sure. Okay, now what I want to do for you is uh, two things, and then we're going to have Sharon come. You may have it, yes. I'm all done with that. Okay, so I, we had our water boiled. I'm going to go ahead and put that in this pan just to get a jump on it while I'm thinking about it. And then, you know what, I've done this. I actually, well, I might, but I, w I really want to do the, the meat sauce in this pan, mm -hmm. so I'm going to transfer the water to that pan. Okay. That's what I've done backwards. The more I think about it, I'm going to change my mind. And why, I don't, where did the whole thing start about women are allowed to change their minds? I, I've heard that, but I don't know. The men would probably know that. Maybe they can help us with that. Yeah. Now, the Fissler induction burner knows that the weight of the pot is no longer there. So it, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it. Um, so it, it turns itself off. All right, coming back to our meats, or uh, not our meat sauce, we're going to do that next. We'll just start it and let it begin to simmer before Sharon comes up to share with you. And then what I have here strewn all over the counter is, are the ingredients for the pie filling. So get them within reach. And yeah, okay. here we go. So this is gonna be a slightly thick crust. And like I said before, you have complete control when you're at home doing this yourself. You can uh, make it thinner if you prefer. I want this here. Let me remind myself what goes in the pan first. I want to, in my mixing bowl, combine my dry ingredients. which in this case, I've got some more Sucanat. You remember, it's your brown sugar replacer. And I have doubled this recipe. So we're looking at two cups of Sucanat. Now, it says you can use Sucanat or honey granules. I really like the rich flavor of the brown sugar Sucanat with chocolate, with pumpkin, with coffee. It just, it just really goes well with um, that sweet potato, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I just prefer that one here. That's what I chose. And then I've got my cocoa powder and just a little bit of flour. Okay, and I want to just combine this with the dry whisk. It's easier on you when you get it into the pan if you do. And we just, I, I want this mixed up ahead because it needs to bake and cool a little bit to be served. And we sure, like I said, I don't want to run short of time and have you watch me make dessert and then not get to taste it. That would just be torturous. <laughs> you, you appreciate that. I hear you. That's right. Right. And you're, you will not lack for dessert today. Just as we fed you for breakfast, we are feeding you for dessert. Hello. Okay. But now, you know, we're 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 doing some lupper in between, remember? I have gotten sugar all over my notes here. Okay. 
I have my dry ingredients combined. I am going to get my eggs into here, and I think I need, don't I need water or something? No, it's my melted butter, yes. Okay, so two sticks of butter. There's, there's a liquid in here somewhere in this recipe. And I just, I didn't want to measure that yesterday and let it sit on the tray all day, so I knew I'd be standing here going, there's something missing. And there is, but we're okay. I am doubling. I am doubling because we're doing two pies. That way maybe you can get more than one little spoonful. So that's the idea. And so your first step is, is just to, <laughs> your first step is just to melt your butter on low. I don't want to boil it. I don't want to heat it for a long time and have it break and separate the water out. But just, um, you, can, you can use your preference on this, whether that be salted or unsalted butter. I'm pretty sure what I grabbed was salted just because that was what was handy right there. So this is going to melt, and then I've got all these eggs I need to crack. So I'll get cracking. Yes, you may. You may use the egg-free substitutes in every recipe, any and every recipe, whether it's mine or one of your cookbooks at home. Absolutely, they work. They've all been tried and tested, and they work. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, she's saying, well, you know, depending on the recipe, should you, should you choose one egg replacer over another? And more so, depending on the, the egg replacer that you like and find convenient, or the ingredients you have in the house today. And so that's one reason that we give you more than one egg replacer recipe. Yeah. Oh, hello. Yeah, now if it's... If you're replacing egg powder, egg, you know, that dry egg replacer powder, these are not for that. These are to replace a liquid egg, okay? So, yeah, that would be a difference. All right, let me get this egg off my fingers. And while I'm here next to it, oh, that's right. See, I keep trying to, I keep trying to boil the water for the pasta. I need to do the meat sauce. Everyone say it with me. Meat sauce. Got it. All right. I really need help staying on track sometimes. All right, Butter. We're waiting on you. And so, actually, the idea is get the butter melted, and then you just turn the, o the eye off because I'm not cooking the eggs. I don't want them to scramble in the butter, you know. But I do want them to combine with it. So, a few more seconds. Okay, sure. It appears I have a moment to spare. <laughs> okay, she would like a compare a mill comparison, uh, Wonder Mill to Nutramill. I will tell you that the Wonder Mill is the fastest of the two. And the Wonder Mill has the option of the little small grain adapter, which you will enjoy with your gluten-free grains because they're, some of them are teeny, teeny, tiny. And so this sits over the opening to the hopper, and you pour the grains around it as you're milling, and it will control the feed for you. So when you're doing larger quantities, you know, if I'm just doing a half a cup or a quarter cup of one grain, then I can stand there and gradually pour it in and control that speed. But, you know, if I'm doing more, which typically I am, and I'm doing more than one grain, then I can have that in place and just, you know, pour one and pour the next and pour the next. Because typically with gluten-free, 
baking, you need to mill two or three grains. And then oftentimes you're then combining your starches with that. Oh, got to turn it off. We're getting too warm now. Okay, and so the full answer to your question is at our website in the knowledge base. We have written that out for you. And I would encourage you just go there and check out those couple of paragraphs and then you can kind of think it through. They are a little bit different. They're, they're designed differently. The price is about the same. They both come with a limited lifetime warranty. And you could use either one for your flower needs. But, but they are a little bit different. Some people, oftentimes folks just get the one that their friend who told them about milling has. So, you know, we stand behind them both. We wouldn't carry them both if they weren't both great mills. So you can't go wrong is the bottom line. But check out the knowledge base link at our website, and we have written out the comparison for you there. So let me get into my butter so that I don't risk cooking my eggs. I'm going to go ahead and put those dry ingredients and get that stirred in. I've turned my heat off. Okay, once the butter is fully melted, you remove from heat. I'm on, you know, if you have an electric stove, you're going to have to take it off that eye. You realize that. Okay, and then in go my eggs, and I've done four, which should be double. Y'all check me out. All right. Okay, did I omit any ingredients? Vanilla, right? Okay, vanilla is going to be the last thing. Let me try to get my eggs coaxed in. You are going to like the way this smells while it's baking. If you're a fan of chocolate, you already like it, right? You're saying, it has fudge in the name, I'm down. As, my, as the um, middle schoolers say, I'm down with that. All right, it's combined and ready to go. And then I have, I should have an oven at the right temperature for this. So I've got 350. Okay, it says it bakes 35 to 40 minutes, so we'll set a timer once it goes in. Oh my goodness. All right. I could lick it, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> All right. I'm just so I can tell when I have it halved, I'll stop and pour into this one now. <laughs> Y'all want me to pass the pan and the spoon? Some of you are shameless enough to lick it. I don't know. I shouldn't, I shouldn't uh, accuse you. But, you know, as I think Sharon and I don't, we don't think that's a bad thing. I just, I just feel obligated since, since I'm representing, you know, the bread beckers. I, I want to, want to, want to do my best, you know. All right, so these are going in the oven. Let's see where I have this one. Yep, I'm going to put him right here. And we'll set a timer. We'll check them in 35. And they may need to go a little longer. I feel like there's something on the bottom of that. Oh, yeah. There we go. Don't want all that in the bottom of the oven. Okay. So set a timer. By the way, these are so handy. Have y'all seen them? The, the little, this shape is nice, and the way that you set it is so convenient. Okay. What did I say, 35? That's what I just did. Okay. We're good. Okay, so just real quick, uh, Sharon, before you come up, I want to get the meat sauce simmering. And that won't take but a moment. I have, here we go. I did pre-brown the meat and garlic and onion to save us that little step. Just 
just twist that out of my way. Oh, this is the little lid. This doesn't go to that pan. Seemed a little, seemed a little out of place. Now we know why. All right. Okay, be prepared. It's going to smell good in here. The, the torturous part is we have to smell it while it simmers for an hour. So. And this meat sauce, I will tell you, the meat sauce that my family had been, uh, that I had been making for my family and serving for 10 years or more, has been replaced by this recipe. I just, re we like it that much. So that's why I say it's the must try uh, old fashioned meat sauce. And I have, have a tray ready. That is, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. That is turkey. The lean, the very lean turkey, ground turkey. And so I just browned that with the onion and garlic that she calls for. While we're thinking of it, we can go ahead and get our water boiling for the pasta. We'll drain the pasta. It will wait patiently until we're ready for it. But this way, I just hopefully and remembering to do it before we need it. So I've got, this is the rice pasta that we're going to be using. We actually have a variety of shapes. I've chosen the penne, I think, yes, for you for this recipe, but the elbows, you can do a wonderful mac and cheese out of that. My, the only uh, precautionary remark I'd give you on the rice pastas is if you overcook them, they can just um, sort of expand and then turn to mush. So you do want to set a timer, pay attention, get them out where, while they're still just a little al dente, and particularly if you're going to be cooking, you know, re-cooking uh, them longer in another in the recipe, then you want to be extra careful that you don't over overdo it. So what I'm using right now is the Kuhn Rakan safety lid lifter. And so you're going to make your way around and then reverse to release. And it has the coolest little beak on there and a thumb control for that. And that beak is going to now remove my lid. And I have, it's called safety lid lifter because there's no sharp edge for me to cut my hand on. So really like that. I'm pouring in my tomato sauce. Nope. Nope, not at all. So it's, you know, it's really handy for the children to help. You know, that's, that's a, a place where you can safely uh, have their assistance in the kitchen. We do have these out in the store in a variety of colors. So I don't know if we have any more of this wild purple, but, but we have some colors. So, you know, if you want to match your kitchen or just your whim. And you see how fast we're able to zip around that. And then I need, I'm going to use the small end of my um, spoonula, spatula. And this is high heat safe, by the way, and comes in lots of colors. But I'm going to use the small end to be able to drag out this tomato paste. And the recipe actually says two six ounce cans, but tomato paste also comes in a 12 ounce. And, <coughs> excuse me, I'd much rather open one 12 ounce can than two of those little six ounce cans. I just find it easier to deal with. So that is a free tip. No extra charge. All right, but I do find that once I've gotten goo all over the handle, I don't want to hold it that way. 
All right. I'm going to give this a stir before I open that last can. And then we're going to get our seasonings in. And I want you to think about something with me for a moment. Again, this recipe comes out of what the Bible says about Healthy Living Cookbook. And um, those, the seasonings that we're using are dried herbs. And if you think about the standard American diet, um, you may not realize it, but those dried herbs are probably the most nutritious thing most Americans get in their diet because they don't think of that as healthy, and so they're not, they don't shun it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, but it's one of the healthiest things in the diet, and so... Um, not only does it flavor your food, but you're getting such um, a high-packed nutrition punch with that as well. So you can feel really good about the herbs and spices that go into your foods. And I'm, we're going to be serving some things and highlighting for you our dip mixes, which are, this is the diced tomatoes, some organic diced tomatoes. And then I need water, too, don't I? Let's see. Y'all don't have that recipe, do you? Well, it's on page 90. I will just look. Wonder how I had the page memorized. You know how, don't you? Okay. Um, let's see. She's, she calls for one and a half cups water, broth, or tomato juice. So it's pretty, um, and I have tomato juice in my eye. Pardon me. Um, it's pretty flexible there. So today we're just going to use water. Oftentimes, let's see, I think that might be a, in case it's a speck of paper from the can, I'm going to pull that out. Um, it might be, um, not it might be, it's, it's delicious when you use the tomato juice. Um, or vegetable juice. So if you have that on hand, by all means, put it in. That's also added nutrition and flavor. Uh, but water works just fine as well. Or you could even do beef broth. And there again, you're punching that flavor up another notch. So good stuff. Um, but it's a, excuse me, a cup and a half. So I've got a two cup measure here. And this is just starting to boil. So I'll get my dry seasonings in and give it a stir and then share. And I'll move this out of the way and you can come on up. I do want to give them just one word of introduction. But you can, you can be uh, joining me. What I'm putting in is basil, oregano, and parsley. And uh, they're in equivalent amounts. And then a little bit of salt. Some fresh cracked pepper. And you can just salt and pepper to taste. And isn't that set beautiful? So we've got it, we have them this way, and then we have them uh, that are clear like you saw before. So let me grab one of these great Sizzler thingies. Here, Sharon, I'll make you some room. Okay. Just so they can see the presentation. Perfect. Um, this is Sharon Fescannon. She is author of Mommy and Me Gluten Free, which is the the green and yellow book over there. Um, the, all the recipes in her book are fantastic and wonderful. She's a self-proclaimed mad scientist in the kitchen, and what she comes up with is fantastic. So I do, I just want to highlight her cookbook. I'm so honored to have her here with me today. And you, we need to turn your mic on. Yes, I want you to be able to hear what she says. Oh, yes, Where is it? We're going to tell you. Okay. Yes. Say hello. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. There we go. Yeah, there we go. There we okay. go. Hey. So she's going to be sharing, um, she's going to demonstrate one recipe for you, but she's going to let you taste two. Yes. So... We're going to give you plenty of goodies there. Aren't you happy to hear that? Um, 
The recipe that you're trying, that you're gonna be trying in just a moment, is a raspberry square. And it's egg-free, dairy-free, gluten-free, and soy-free, nut-free. It's all free, so you're gonna feel very free when you get done. <laughs> okay, um, just wanna kinda, so when you are, this takes maybe 15 minutes, the max. Do you like the steam effect under that? Well, I'm just afraid you're gonna get burnt. Yeah. No, I'm fine, I'm good. I just wanted so they can see it all. But it's actually very simple. You're just pressing down and you are adding your favorite jam, unless you like to make your own jam, and you're adding your coconut oil and you're adding your coconut on top. It's truly so quick to make. And what's great about this, did you see them, they're cut up and they're putting the little tiny little liners? Well, if you wanna give somebody um, especially if they are struggling with gluten-free or you just want to be nice to someone. Um, just put them in a little bag, a little bow, and it makes a great gift also. So it's just something super easy. They're yummy. You could put the toppings even on things if you want also. Um, it's raspberry squares. Mm -hmm. And um, also as she's passing out, can I, how about a 30 second encouragement? Go. Okay, we're doing 30 seconds because I can't do something without giving you encouragement. That's just how I roll um, and press things down too. But what's interesting was last week, because every time I make a recipe, somehow I always get encouragement because that's just how I guess I'm wired. And um, this recipe when it's created was for many reasons, um, from out of actually a lot of pain and sorrow, a lot of people suffered from, believe it or not, um, from anything from my mom going through a horrible car accident and how God used her brokenness today. Um, she actually, at 74, she had everything below her waist broken, had 30-something operations, she survived. But what's interesting, sometimes we think, well, how can we use our brokenness in life? You know, we, we do, we think, gee, you know, I'm a mess. Uh, you know, my finances are messed up, uh, my dog's sick, my cat's sick, and everybody's sick. What, how can, you know, my life's a mess, it's broken. And I think I want to give you a quick little encouragement, 20 seconds now, is the fact that <laughs> we use that brokenness for something so beautiful, such as God gave me a great example last week when I was making some treats for Easter for many people. Um, somebody was telling me about all the things they were struggling with brokenness. And inside I was thinking, hmm, how can we use this brokenness? She was talking about brokenness. I had some things that broke from this recipe. And you know what God showed me in that? He showed me that your brokenness actually is shines at the top, such as what could we use with this brokenness? We could put it on top of ice cream. We could put it on top of oatmeal. We could put it on the topping. So really, when we think we're broken, we're really on top. So it has nothing to do with our brokenness. Just remember that whatever we're going with, sooner or later, that's gonna shine bigger and better than ever because somebody's gonna come by and go, they don't even see the ice cream and go, gee, that topping looks good. The, that looks good, and it had to do with the brokenness. It didn't have to do with what's underneath it. So I'm gonna encourage you that today, that we all can use our brokenness somehow in this world. And we don't know how, but you're gonna shine with it. So on that dosage, I wanna hope you enjoyed your little raspberry bite. Was that good? Oh, good. So you can pass that story of encouragement to someone else, if you please do. And then we're gonna zip right into, oh, by the way, I just want you to know, I love the USA pans. They really do what they say they're gonna do. Things cut real easy and they slip out. In fact, I got this because I didn't use this, but this really does work real well. And I'm gonna demonstrate real quickly the traditional chocolate chip cookie. Are we wanting more chocolate? <laughs> I don't think that's gonna do. Are we wanting more chocolate? I'll bring your tray to you. Thank you. you. So we tray. are going to do that. And if it's okay, can I just kind of, I'm kind of new with this assistant, unless you need it this way, Ooh, can I Nellie, turn give it? Nellie, me one second, I have, I got we, the heat all turned up, and then I got well, to do She's cranking thing. with heat, and I'm over here cranking up too, so we'll do all fine right. with each other. Now, what was your question? I'm gonna turn this around, since I'm that experienced with assistant, so just give me a little grace with the assistant, assistance. Um, I've used it a few times and love it. Someday when I grow up, I'll get one of those in my kitchen. Do I hear an amen to that one? Yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. Okay. I'm sorry. I was going to run that to you, no, but no, 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 we're no, sticking no. on the bottom. No, you, we can't you know have what? That. You're tied up with that, and I'm not tied up with that. So I'm going right. to come over here. Um, and I'm looking for, oh, here we go. Yes. I want to make sure everything's there. So in the book, you, if you want a yummy 
traditional chocolate chip gluten-free cookie, you came to the right page. This is egg-free, dairy-free, gluten-free. So we got you all covered. All the people think they can't have it. Today's your day to sing, what did we say at the very beginning? Hallelujah. Yeah. So if you feel like you need to do a hallelujah, this is a hallelujah cookie for you all. And it's so simple, you're going to love it. Do we like simplicity? Do we like simple things? Good. All right. Got to get a little more excitement here. Um, but it's, and it's healthy. We got good healthy because I don't believe in just doing gluten-free. I believe that we need to do multi-grain or something healthy in it. Because because just because we have gluten-free, does that mean that it's healthy? Good. So we got to have some good stuff in it. Because a lot of times the gluten-free is what? It has a lot of white flour, white sugar. You know, sorry for the companies that are doing that. But we want healthy. That's what we're promoting here. So we are going to start with some olive oil. Is that healthy? Gosh, you guys are good. Is that going to make you live to your 150? Yes. <laughs> Come on, crowd. So we got our olive oil we're going to put in there. Simple. I'm telling you, this is going to be so simple. You're going to go, I'm going to go home and make it today. It's so simple. And then what we're going to do is we are going to add the sucanut, which you already explained that earlier, mm -hmm. I believe. Sucanut. Mm -hmm. And then we got our honey granules. And our flaxseed is going to be our egg replacement here. By the way, I have tried this recipe without the flaxseed, and it works. How about that? Um, I the, messed up the first time I tried it. I assumed yeah. the flaxseed was ground. Yeah. It is not. No, She's it's not. putting it in whole. So yes. just notice that. Yes. It yeah. is whole. So we're going to put it in whole. Whoop. It actually, the flaxseed itself um, versus whole. Flaxseed will make a better egg and will hold, help hold it together. However, for this recipe, and it was a mistake, I didn't put the flaxseed in it. And the coconut being so thick and everything together, it was amazing how it still worked. So it's full of grace, this recipe. Nice to know, huh? And then we're going to milk. Now, what we're going to do is we Would are going okay to turn it on. Move your mixer oh, out. Oh, absolutely. Just Please do. Here we go. Presentation there. Can you all see? Can you see it? Maybe okay? I moved it out of the shot. So. Uh oh. Sorry. Good. Okay. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn on, just for a moment, we're going to, the whole thing is to, the flaxseed and the liquid, and you'll see in the cookbook, I said just put it together. I believe in going one through four, put it together, boom, turn it on, move on to the next. So all this is in here, this is going to help, it's going to help put it together, your little gelatin, your substitute from your egg. So that's why I'm mixing all this together. And then as soon as it mixes together, for say 30 seconds or less, then we're going to add our um, oat flour, and it's a gluten-free oat flour. Now. I took the oats, the gluten-free oats from Bob's Red Mill, and put it in the Mega Blend. I love that Mega Blend. Maybe you can ask for that for a Christmas birthday or whatever you like to do. Maybe the assisted to go along with it. Got a lot of things you can ask in your Christmas stocking. I believe in Christmas in April. What do you think? I'm going along with it. So and then what we're going to do is we're going to add, in just a moment, we're going to add your how is that tasting over there? Mm -mm. Not yet. We're going to add the oat flour and then the coconut flour. Now, has everyone in here tried to experiment with coconut flour? Can I see a hand of who has not experienced with coconut flour? Oh, good. They're in for a treat. They are in a big treat. Coconut flour is one of my favorite flours to work with. I could probably do a class just on coconut flour because it is so wonderful. Um, coconut flour is known as a hypo, hypoallergenic food. However, some people still have a tendency, if they have a very sensitive food allergies, might want to avoid it. But it, it's not a nut, um, and it is easy to digest. It's high, full of high fiber, and it's so good for us. However, one of the things that we have to be careful about is the fact that it is so full of fiber, when you put liquid to it, it's going to go, so it gets very thirsty on you. So remember, when you're using coconut flour, it's going to get thirsty. So if you want, for instance, these cookies, if you want the traditional kind of cookie, meaning it's going to be more of that flat, then mix it very at a short period of time. If you don't mind, you have a little thicker cookie, then let it mix for a while. It's full of grace, this recipe. Some gluten-free recipes, if you mix for a while, they kind of, uh, it's okay with this. You can let it go if you want a thick cookie. So now what we're going to do is we are going to add 
or oat flour. Is it all easy so far? Or as my son says, easy peasy, is it easy peasy so far? Good. We want to make life easier, right? We're all about making life easier. So we're going to turn it up a notch here, and then we're going to, what I'm going to do as soon as I finish making this to save on time, I'm going to show you how nicely it's going to go on the USA pan. No, I don't work for them. I just love their pans. Um, we're going to put it on there, and I'll step over at the side, and then we're going to put them in the oven. And then when they come out, you're all going to get a, a cookie because you've been so good, so good. See how that's all looking nice? Isn't that pretty? Mm -hmm. The whole thing, the reason why I want to demonstrate this is to give you um, an idea of the texture, because gluten-free sometimes is a little funny with texture. So you want to see, what is this going to look like when I go on? It gives you a little more confidence when you're able to get a good picture of what it's looking like. So now we're going to go ahead and add our vanilla. Now I'm a little extra, so I can't say that's exactly a teaspoon. I don't believe in doing just a teaspoon. I believe in doing a little extra, because it smells so good. And everybody, has everyone tried the wonderful extracts here? If you haven't, I want to see your hand. All right, you're in a good surprise because these, aren't they wonderful, Denise? Yes. Mm, yes, can't, yes. Can't get enough of them. Then we got the real salt and we got soda. Real soda too, whatever that is, huh? Then we're going to add our co coconut flour. Is that quick enough? And then all we're going to do is just let it roll for just a second here, if that. And I'm going to now add okay and I'm gonna let it go and I'm gonna let you see this just a now nah, well, we'll just need a little bit more just to make sure that we got the soda in now if you indeed you say gee I want that thinner cookie and I don't want that thick guess what you could do this recipe you can add more rice milk and it's fine because that coconut flour is thirsty. So it is ready and willing to take a little more liquid. So it's very forgiving, this recipe. And we are going to actually, you know, I was just thinking, let's go ahead and add the chocolate chips too. All right. And yes, I, there's three-fourths cup that's in the book. So yeah, maybe I added a few more. <laughs> because we like chocolate. And these are the Enjoy Life dairy-free yes. chocolate chips. So uh, the minis are wonderful. They disperse with, throughout the cookie and you get lots of great chocolate in every bite. Mm -hmm. But for those who need dairy-free, that is also part of the, uh, what, part of the blessing of that. It's it, good it stuff. Is. It's absolutely, it's wonderful. Um, and same chips, chips, yes. Same chips. And um, kids, I don't know if really, and you know, we have people that come over that don't need egg-free, dairy-free, gluten-free, all that, even though my, sis, my son, thankfully, is able to do dairy, or eggs now, but they love these. So it's a real children, child's delight I'm happy to um, promote. If you don't tell them, they'll never know, They'll never basically. know. But if you say, would you like to try an egg-free, dairy-free, gluten-free, and they're like, oh, oh, yeah. right? Would you just like a chocolate chip cookie? Well, yes, Miss Sharon, I got your cookies. In fact, we were visiting in Texas um, beginning of January, and my friend, she says, will you make those cookies? I said, sure. So I make them, and there were like 10 boys that came in the house playing, and they said, it's dessert time. I'm like, you got it, and had the plate out there, and um, the kids came back, we'd like to have more of those. They said, help yourself, and that one child knew they were not. So anyways. So I'm going to kind of show you real quickly. And even this is a tad thick for me because I want to make them a little thinner. So I, this gives me an opportunity to show you how you can add it and it's forgiving. You can also make your own rice milk if you have the, what is it? The, the soy milk maker that we carry, you can make rice milk very quickly and yes. easily in it. With soybeans, you actually have to pre-soak those before you make your soy milk, but with rice, you put your brown rice in the maker and fill it, fill the water to the water line and press start and you've got rice milk in 15 mm -hmm. or 20 minutes. And then, you know, if you want that um, seasoned with a little bit of honey and vanilla, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. for drinking you could typically when I make my rice milk it's for cooking okay so okay. let me let Sharon and then I'm gonna go dip over here a couple and dip of, well go ahead and dip a okay. couple just so they can see them. okay the USA baked pan does not require any oil nope the cookies are gonna slide right off in fact they slide so well they do we have to be very careful pulling them out of the get oven. ready to get your glove mitt ready if you or do your oven mitt. you make a sudden move and boom they're going for a yes, ride on Yes, they you. are what they tell you. But I just want to show you then, and then I'll step at the side so Denise can move with it. But yeah, we're going to do pizza next. And I'm going to show you about three of them. How about that? And then I'll go over there and move at the side. But isn't that, isn't, aren't they nice? Well, and it's very helpful for me to see the desired moisture level if you want the chewy, flatter cookie. So. So you know, but if you want it that. thicker, again, let it sit there and go talk on the phone, do whatever you got to do, and you come back, the cookie. So that's what's so nice about it. And by the way, you can also do, which we won't do it right now because I know she's telling me, go on, move on, but you can even do ice cream cookies. Yeah. There's a great They're section so good. in the, in the uh, recipe book. Let me pass that for yep. you. Thank you, and I'll show you after I put it in what they look like and when they come out, you're all getting a cookie. Thank you so much, everybody. Sharon Fescana, again, author of Mommy and Me Gluten-Free. Uh, uh, I, I think you will not be disappointed no matter what recipe you try in that book. And then be also be aware that this recipe is the traditional chocolate chip cookie. There's also a breakfast chocolate chip cookie and then uh, her son has written his top 10 ways to enjoy that. So, fun stuff. You got to look at the book. And so, yes? Um, Don and Carol Gray, they um, participated in um, volunteering their time in the book, and they surprised me today, showing up today, and they did some beautiful artwork. So, I just wanted to awesome. thank Carol and Don today um, for their, they just did such beautiful work. and. I just appreciate that. So they're here Thank too. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Now My mic I, is now turned I am off. about to make yeah. <laughs> I'm about to make some pizza for you. Um, our rice pasta got ready. I have it drained. We're gonna let the meat sauce simmer for just a few more minutes before we assemble the Italian. And then once you have the cookies ready to go in the oven, they go in this lower left oven. Lower left. Okay. Uh-huh. Let's make sure. Uh, no, I need to, let me bump it up a little. Okay. I turned it up just a, just a notch for you. All right. I am so excited to bring gluten-free pizza to you. Um, and I was equally ecstatic when on the first day that I came in to do trial run, the um, recipe was a success, first try. So that tells me it's, it's going to be easy for you to take that recipe home and run with it and do it yourself. And I'm just going to get our oil measured. I need four tablespoons, so I'm going to use this little mini angled measuring cup. And I'm also going to need some water, and we need warm water, which this is already warmed. So I've got a two cup measure out, but since I need two and a half cups, I'm going to go with my, my big four cup fella. And this is actually probably too hot. I'm going to grab a thermometer because they tell us in the recipe to aim for. Let me set this here a sec. To aim for about 120. So what have I done with my thermometer? Here's the cover. Aha. Okay, so I put some of the hot water in. I'm going to add a little that's not, that hasn't just boiled to it and see if we can achieve that nice warm water without going way beyond that because this is a yeast 
dough. And so if you get that temperature way beyond that, it can kill the yeast. So right now I'm at 125. But when this water hits that big cold stainless steel bowl, it's going to drop a few degrees. So I'm not worried about being five degrees over. But if it were more than that, I would uh, pour out some of that hot water and add some more cold. Okay, because for, again, the purpose there is not to kill my yeast. So I need another mixing bowl for the assistant. We'll just drop that onto the base. There we go. And grab another roller scraper. I'm going to put the scraper right there. Drop the pin to hold the roller. And you can see how this seats up against the bowl. Initially, it's the bowl turning the roller. Now, I have already, let me get this water out of my way. I have already measured the flour. I've made up the pizza flour, and then I have measured also the dry ingredients in. This just needs a quick stir. So you can, you can see all that there. The only, what's not in my flour that I need to add is the yeast because yeast dies at room temperature. So I did not pre-measure that and let it sit here overnight. It wouldn't die that quickly, but I want it to be nice and efficient and do its job. So in addition to the buckwheat flour, and buckwheat is not a variety of wheat, by the way, the amaranth and the brown rice, uh, the dr other dry ingredients are the honey granules, the salt, the um, Italian seasoning, baking powders, anthem gum. And so I just need two teaspoons of yeast for this, but I have doubled this recipe. One teaspoon. So I'm going to put my two teaspoons in and then just kind of combine those dry ingredients before I dump them in the mixer bowl. And the way the recipe reads, it, it wants you to, uh, they, they tell you to combine this. Yes? Oh, I didn't double the yeast. Thank you. That's exactly what I need. Yeah, if I had been thinking, I would have done a tablespoon plus a teaspoon, but I, because one tablespoon is three teaspoons. But we did two. Oh, I smell that fudge. We did two teaspoons, so I'm measuring two more teaspoons. All righty. Now, uh, we, Maggie, if you have a moment to check the cheesecake in the freezer, we want it to hold together, but we don't want it so solid that we can't slice it. Yeah, that back one. Thank you. So if you think it's ready to serve, then we'll get it to the girls over here at the serving table. In other, in other recipes, you never add the salt and the yeast together, but this one does tell you to put it all, I thought it said to put it all in, didn't it? All the dry ingredients. So that's what we're doing. And here we go. We're, let's get the mixer on. The idea is incorporate your water in with the, that means check the fudge pie. If it's still, oh, way cool. Yeah, those, okay. uh, if, come down. if we're happy with the crust, I think, let's give them five more okay. minutes. 
I'll set this and set this when it's closer to five. Huh. I've been trying to operate without my reading glasses on. So, so far so good. Thank you so much for catching that. I appreciate it on the yeast there. And so I'm just making sure I'm on low speed so the flour doesn't go everywhere. And I am gonna get, I should have put the water in first. That's what I meant to do. You know, we talked about the water in the, the water in the cold bowl thing. Okay, so, but with this crust, here we go. So I'm turning it to on. And this is gonna be thick enough that I don't want my roller to push it up and out of the bowl. So I'm gonna move it off the side of the bowl a bit. Go ahead and get my water in. And it really is so quick and easy to mix up this crust that you just incorporate the water and the flour together. Let me see if that's, if it even needs, okay. And now, as I get the oil in, we'll bump up the speed and knead it for just a couple of minutes. Yes? Let me step away from this so I can hear you one second. I'm gonna put my timer, whoops, wrong way. Put my timer on a minute there, and shoot, what was that question? Okay. You know what, if you, she wants to use her Zoharishi bread machine to make her dough, yes, because it's fully programmable. So you can put the water and all the dry ingredients in and just set it to knead for, I'd say something like five, four or five minutes, you'll have to try it once and see. But after it, after everything's well stirred, then stream your oil in and let it continue. But that's what I would do to adjust it. I, I would still, I would add the oil. I mean, you're only looking at five minutes here, so you're not gonna use your regular dough cycle and walk away. No, no, it gets ready way too fast. No, but you can program one of those blanks for just five minutes of kneading. You can just tell it all you want is five minutes of kneading. No preheat, no nothing else. And so yeah, you could use it. Sure, actually, and let's, before I put this in, I want to just give it a quick spray. All right, that's done. I'm gonna assemble the pasta bake and go ahead and get it in the oven. And then we're gonna shape, well, we're not gonna shape our dough yet. We uh, let the dough rest in the, in the oven that's set to proof it. Um, we're gonna, you might need that space for the pies that are coming out. And then we also, okay, well, we're gonna serve it even if it's not set, but we have a few minutes for it to continue to stay in the, in the freezer. So she's saying the cheesecake is not set. We don't want it frozen and hard, you know, that's gonna be miserable for you, so we don't want it. We don't want it frozen, but we do want it to hold together a little bit. And even if it doesn't, it's gonna taste so good. And you'll know that you can just let it go a little longer at home. You'll have that freedom. All right. This is the simplest thing. Once you, you know, putting the meat sauce together is extremely easy, but boy, does it taste good. And so then you've got your hands free for the simmer time. And I let this sit there a while. You normally would not do that, and it's not going to stick to your stuff. But. Okay. And I actually, my... To save time, I'm dumping it right into the pan and then dumping the sauce and the cheese on. Um, 
it, my, my preference would be to stir it together in a bowl and then dump it in so that, it's, so that your sauce combines real well. I don't think it really matters, but... And we're just going to run it in the oven long enough to melt the cheese on top. Because as you see, the, the sauce is nice and hot. Okay. And do you have a free hand to pull the pies out of the oven? Thank you. I want to make sure that sauce seats down. <laughs> We're going to let those cool a little bit. They slice much easier after they've cooled some. Yeah, if you could just present right here so they can see. That is Susanna Spudge Pie. <laughs> it typically sinks while it cools, so it may not stay all mounded up like that, but either way, it tastes good. Okay. So I'm going to get this in to melt the cheese, and then we're going to continue with pizza dough, and I have some more good stuff for you. And I will tell you, the cheese that I'm using is the Heinies that we carry out in the refrigerator case out there. And this is the garlic and herb yogurt cultured cheese. There again, you're getting some wonderful cultures in, and I want a little more cheese than that, so let me get, I have some additional grated there while you're in the fridge. Let me grab that big bucket. <clears throat> I grated one of those large wheels. It was, well, not the largest size, but one of the big wheels uh, weighed, it was under three and a half pounds, and it yielded this bowl full and all of this grated. And I, you know, kind of shook it and kept filling it up. So that was, that was a lot. And I grated it using the Verona Assistant and was able to do that whole thing in uh, just a very short time. So let's just put a little more cheese on top and I'll pop this in the oven for you. Have you got, do, were you able to get some cookies in the oven already? Okay. Fantastic. We don't mind if we have extra. Uh, the, the employees are going to be very happy if there's enough for them to taste some things too. Question back here, I'm sorry. Oh, shucks. I did mean to do that for you. Huh. Hmm. There's, well, there is a corner, but I've already put some cheese on it. So let's let's see if I can let's see if I can un uncover. I'm gonna uncheese it. There you go. Yeah, I can do that. It's it's pulling away. It is pulling away. It's gonna be good. Okay. Yeah. Well, what is beneficial uh, about gluten-free cooking for diabetics? Nothing unless you use the whole grains instead of buying the white rice flour mixes. But if you do mill your own whole grains to make your bread and rolls and other products like we're doing today for the pizza crust and so forth, uh, then you're getting 100% whole grain. You're getting all the fiber and nutrition um, and that fiber is going to uh, keep your blood sugar stable. So it, it is important and it is good, but otherwise it's, you know, that's what makes it helpful for, for diabetics. Let me slide that in. And I better set a timer because we're gonna get to talking about pizza. And we need to move it on the pizza because it has just a couple, they're simple, but it has a couple of steps to go through yet. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
fantastic. So she's she's saying that she gets great results with her stable blood sugar using bean flour. And we're, we're about to get to some bean flour. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. And absolutely, it, uh, that is another great fiber to have in your diet. And every single bean is on the okay list. And you can mill the dried beans into seems a little wet, doesn't it? You can mill the dried beans into flour and cook with it, as you'll see. I'm going to demonstrate that. Right. So she's as a nurse practitioner, she is encouraging you to check the glycemic index. And I'm going to have to, we're going to have to leave that subject and, and try to stay with pizza if I could get you to. I'm sorry. I would love to uh, follow every rabbit trail, and that's typical of me, but we, are, we have a time constraint. So let's make sure you get to have some pizza today. And... For better or worse, I have doubled the recipe. I really wanted you to have the opportunity to have the pizza also on one of the stones. And so I need, no, I need a, um, like a metal bowl. But actually, I'll just use the pizza round. It'll, this'll be fine. I'll just use the pizza round. Um, and so what I have here is some olive oil dipping sauce. This is something that the Beckers keep on hand and season dried beans with and use um, in all sorts of ways. But what I'm going to do here, although the USA pan doesn't need any oil to keep the pizza from slipping, um, it needs oil to keep the dough moist while we let it rest for a little while in the, in the proofer. So I have one of the ovens set to 100 degrees to proof our dough. And I want my little, get my scraper back. Can I have that white scraper that fits this bowl? Is it still with y'all? I can use another spatula. Yes, that is the magic trick. That is exactly what I need. Okay. Yeah, that just really makes it easy. Okay. Yeah, throw it in the dirties for me. Okay. So, yeah, with that, can you see how easily I can scrape this and my dough looks kind of wet compared to that first trial so I may have been a little heavy-handed on my um, on my water but I think it will still work I always for um, some something about trying to talk and shoot walk and chew gum at the same time my recipes turn out a little better when I'm not doing all that at once. But do you see, I mean, doesn't that look a little wet to you? I think it's, I think it's a little on the wet side. So do we still have some of the um, brown rice blend flour? I might, I might need just a, a bit. Okay, and so what they suggest that you do is moisten your fingers. But what I'm going to do is, um, and they tell you to drop this in a bowl. Thank you. So in case we need that, it's handy. <clears throat> Rather than water, the, the top of this also needs some oil. And I'm using this because not only will it do the trick that I need the oil to do, but it seasons it wonderfully, you know. So it's got the Italian seasoning. Um, it has just a just a speck of salt, and it's got some pepper, and it's the extra virgin olive oil. And the one that we carry is this very nice, rich, wonderful olive oil. It's very high quality. And so what I'm going to do is get this in the proofer. Let it rest a few minutes, and then we're going to roll it out. 
and I've got some treats for you while I do that. Not more dessert this time, but some things we can do with quinoa and, let me get some soap here, with uh, quinoa and with bean flour, some super quick and easy things. You're thinking, how can you do another recipe right now? Well, because they're that quick and easy, and I want you to know about them, because then you don't have to reach for um, something that is less nutritious, and you'll have this in your in your recipe repertoire as well. So, as I said, this needs to go in the oven to proof. And boy, it looks like I have a it's swimming in oil now, doesn't it? We'll we'll get rid of some of that. And the idea is just for it to um, to rest at. in a warm place. They say put in a warm place for 30 minutes. I've got it in the in the proofer at 100 degrees and that's going to speed up our time a little bit, which will be helpful. I think I'm finished with the mixer. We'll just get that out of our way. Oh, look what's coming here. Okay, I'm going to scoot back by out of your way. Okay. Yeah, can y'all see them? Um, and careful not to move too fast. <laughs> they, they literally will come off to the front row. Enjoy it gently. So they'll yeah. Catch. Oh, wait a minute. We have somebody over here ready to catch. Oh, she's going to catch. <laughs> it's a little hot, actually. <laughs> That's great. It's coming your way really quick, I promise. Coming your way. And will you all um, just remember about, we'll pull the cheesecake out, but um, I... We're going to pull that. We're going to let them have the Italian pasta bake in just a moment. We're letting that cheese melt. Okay, and so what I was about to do for you why don't we scoot this, scoot this over for a moment. I've got a couple of things for you. Um, Maggie, if you can hear me, I don't know if we um, sliced up those tomatoes, but let's quarter the little cherry tomatoes. And then we'll get a, I've messed up all the pots and pans. I want a little pressure cooker. Let's go with, This one's handy. It'll work. Now, your recipe says rice, wild rice pilaf. That's what we're about to make. However, I am substituting the quinoa for you in this recipe. And I might ought to open the recipe. This is so quick and easy. Now, we're going to um, we're gonna come right back to the chicken soup. Um, this is eat your veggies rice pilaf, and so since we're substituting the quinoa, it's eat your veggies quinoa pilaf. When you do it with the wild rice or brown rice or rice of choice, um, don't use white rice. You know, that has had the bran and the fiber polished off. But when you do it with those rices, it's going to cook for 20 minutes in the pressure cooker, or you could simmer it. Um, it's going to take more like 50 minutes to an hour conventionally, you know, in a pan. But um, so I want, I am doubling this for you. So I'm going to do um, the one and a fourth cups, excuse me, make that two and a half cups of the chicken broth. Just a moment, I'm waiting on the fridge. Okay, here we go. So I've got my chicken broth here. And actually, I, what I do is I double um, for the quinoa. The, for pilaf, you can, 
you can get away with a little less liquid than when you're just boiling it to eat it, but I, I, we don't want it to be um, dry. And I've got, um, gosh, that's definitely two cups of quinoa. It looks like more than it looks like more than two cups actually, but I think in the in the rinsing it expanded a little bit. So this is almost a full container of broth, which is four cups, and I'm going to use it all. Oh, I'm skipping. Yeah, if you'll. Uh, just quarter those. I'll need them for the next recipe. You can pass them right up here if you like to. Uh, what was that? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm going to use them in. I'm going to use them in just a moment. We're going to do soup and then that recipe. Okay, I got ahead of myself. I dumped the broth in. Thank you. I dumped the broth in and then uh, realized I wanted to saute the quinoa first. So that's why I'm backing up here. I've got some olive oil dipping sauce. I got to talk it into heating up for me. There we go. Which is not going to like that chicken broth, but hey, that's maybe it's better than water. Maybe it won't splatter me too bad. I'll go ahead and get the quinoa in. So again, the olive oil dipping sauce recipe is in the red recipe collection. And if you, if because you're eating gluten-free, you don't own the recipe collection, we'll be happy to share the, the olive oil dipping sauce with you. Just email me, and the email address is support at breadbeckers.com. That's support, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, at breadbeckers.com. Hmm, you know, the garlic, her question is how long does the dipping sauce keep? Uh, the garlic actually serves as a preservative in the olive oil, and so it's going to keep uh, even longer than the olive oil would have already, which would be several months at room temperature. So, but oh yeah, just keep it on the counter. You don't need to refrigerate it. But the thing is, you'll go through it once once you figure out how awesome it is, and you'll you'll be using it in everything. Uh, you'll you'll run out of what you have prepared. And, and make up more so all right let me get I've got my I've got my temperature to about medium high not that the pans that hot yet but that's what the temperature is and you can see what the quinoa looks like I want you to get a good look at it now before it cooks because it really looks different remember um, as we were making that hot breakfast cereal I mentioned to you you can tell when it's done by the way it unwinds and it gets translucent. So it will look different, and I just want you to see that visual um, so that you know at home when yours is done. But the cool thing about the quinoa in the pressure cooker is we're talking two minutes of pressure before it's done. I'll just use that. I need one more spoon rest in my, in my life. Okay, so with the with the brown rice it's more important that it saute for a few minutes to uh, develop a flavor you're looking for some flavor there and then that also speeds up the cooking of that rice so uh, dual purpose to this preliminary saute there we go and so at this point I am adding the eat your veggies part. Let me show you something. No. Okay, these are the dip mixes that we carry. You can see one of the small packets of eat your vegetable down on the display table. And so it comes in those little packets, but then it also comes in a um, 16 ounce bag. And so we use these so much in so many ways that We've just filled up the jars and labeled them. And what these contain is no salt, no artificial anything. It's those wonderful, nutritious herbs and spices, and you're going to enjoy them, I predict. So eat your veggies. 
you can read the list from the label there to find out all the vegetables that are in it. But that's going in along with our chicken broth. And make sure that your chicken broth is a good quality. Don't skimp on that because that's a big part of your seasoning of your dish. Okay? I just want to stir that and try to get some of the quinoa off of my spatula here. And this is the Fissler pressure cooker. And you really could do any, what's so funny? Oh, <laughs> um, you really could do other shapes of the pressure cooker. I just grabbed the one that was handy in the front here. You don't have to use this shape. And you can kind of think of your pressure cooker, excuse my lid, as a set of pots and pans. So this size and shape would be awesome for browning some meat. Okay, I'm going to line up these two little dots and then slide that and then pull my tab to lock. And we're going to be watching, we're going to be watching for that button to come up to the, I have a feeling I didn't finish that last sentence and now I've interrupted this one to tell you I did um, so we're waiting for this to come up to the second line, and that's going to be cooking at high pressure, just two minutes, and then we're going to take it off the heat. So it was boiling. Uh, I like for it to be boiling before I put the lid on. Then the pressure pops right up. We set these here. On the broth, well, what I mean, a good quality, this is organic, um, and, <laughs> excuse me, and, you know, we carry some good ones, but you can also find some good ones. I prefer the organic broths for sure, um, and just one that, you know, that it tastes good, so, because it does really add to your flavor, so it really plays in there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is a soup over here, and I'm going to use that pan that she has ready get this one out of our way ladies and gentlemen this is a three minute cream of chicken soup now this is out of country beans cookbook and this is going to this is going to uh, show us some great ways that we can use the bean flour. I did mill the beans, just ran the whole dried bean right through the mill. And for this recipe, I wanted a white bean. Now, white beans are going to encompass the ones I used, which were baby lima beans. But you could also do the small white navy bean or a garbanzo or a great northern. All of those are white beans. They're going to be very mild tasting as a flour in your recipe. And since this is going to be um, using chicken broth, I'm going to go with a mild bean. And so this is the bean flour that I have milled up. And I've got four cups. This is an unopened chicken broth. And there is a trick to these chicken broths, which I'll show you. And instead, you think pull, no, you push down. So that's the trick to opening this. Push down, and I'm going to get the broth in, and then whisk in the bean flour, and, and I'm going to season it with a little salt and pepper. Uh, this has some salt in it, so I don't want to get too heavy-handed with the salt. And you can monitor that, you know, if you want to buy the low sodium. Because if you're using, you know, salt can be an issue. That's one reason you want to stick with the real salt. The real salt alkalizing to your system, it's, it's not going to um, cause the stomach upset and acid indigestion that you get with the refined salt. There are other reasons for stomach upset and acid indigestion, but your salt can definitely be a part of the problem. So I'm just going to do some fresh cracked pepper here. Let me get my heat up because I need this to boil. Here we go. 
do some fresh cracked pepper and just a little salt because like I said the um, chicken broth has salt in it and then we're going to be whisking that flour in I really need that to come to a boil or very close before I put that in and then I brought out for you I think I don't think we're gonna have time to um, show it but I brought out for you our refried beans so this is a pinto bean it's nothing but pinto bean and salt they've cooked these spread them out cut them into pieces dehydrated them and so now they store long term and you can pull this out whisk it into an equal amount of boiling water simmer for 10 minutes and you have refried beans and a tip since I've got just a second for while I'm waiting for that to boil is uh, you can also we find that the jack and the bean dip let's see I had it right here the jack and the bean dip pairs very well with the refried beans and so whether you just want them as refried beans to serve with chips or roll up in a tortilla or you're going to you know do the whole seven layer dip Mexican dip it, this really is a wonderful seasoning and it matches very well with that so that one's called Jack and the Bean Dip they all have great names garlic is eaten some like it hot you know so cute great names and so what I'm gonna do for you here is whisk the bean flour in trying to avoid getting a lot of lumps so just keep the whisk moving as the flour goes in and you see this is not in a pressure cooker this is just a regular pan this cream of chicken soup is only cooks for three minutes and you do need to simmer it for those three minutes in order to that flowers not falling out in order to get rid of that raw taste of the bean but that's all it takes and at the same time that bean flour is going to thicken this and then I have some cooked chicken I had some extra from the fast fixes class and it has it's slightly seasoned with my all-purpose chicken seasoning so it has a little bit of flavor of its own the chicken is not just you know plain bland but um, if it were you could just add a little more seasoning of your own to it or this is another place where you could use one of the dip mixes or you could dice up vegetables that you have on hand or use your leftover vegetables and get them into the soup now on the same page in her cookbook the country beans book you will find a recipe that replaces the cream of the cans of cream of chicken soup in a recipe so if you have a recipe that calls for a can of cream of chicken soup now you can make your own replacement much healthier version with none of that artificial stuff in it and none of those hydrogenated fats and it only takes five minutes to make that up three to five so this is thickening nicely I'm gonna go ahead and add the chicken to it yes um, really quick we're way behind <laughs> really quick so you're telling them it gets it get that that was the thicker batter that went in the second round okay and y'all see where we're coming up to the second line so I need to reduce my heat to simmer and same with the soup it has boiled and it just needs to simmer and oh is it boiling Let's get that temperature down okay and this is just about ready to serve I'm going to cover it so it doesn't splatter 
that is good to go. And you could thin that with some water or some more broth if that's thicker than you want. And I think that's what we'll do. Let me add just a little water to it. And But before I leave the subject of bean flour, I want to remind you that it makes a great thickener for your gravies. And so, and it's so quick to, to make your bean flour in the mill in just a few seconds time. And then you're adding that wonderful protein and that soluble fiber and all the nutrition of that dried bean. And your, the beans are very nutritious, very good for you. All right, just a little bit more. Maggie, you may need to help serve the food that's all coming out at the same time now, dear. You might, I might beg you to come to the serving table if you can help me out. Uh, because I'm ready to pull the pasta bake out, and so I'm going to set it over here to cool. And what, what we might do since all this is getting ready at the same time, oh, and this has had its two minutes, hasn't it? What we might do is be able to line this up in a row and put several things on a plate at one time. That would be convenient, huh? Okay. I was so sure that we were all pre-measured and we were going to zip right through. And here we are running behind. So let me, get, let me get that pizza dough out. We have got to handle our pizza. I have some turkey sausage and then that great Heinie's yogurt cultured cheese. And as I said earlier, I chose the um, herb and garlic or garlic herb, I think it might read on the label. That might still be warm. Oh, 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 come back. Oh, yeah. I would say it's hot and bubbly. And the cheese is just starting to golden on the top here. Okay. There we go. And Mia, if you can clear that runway for me, I've got the pilaf and the soup. And I think you guys have seen, you saw how the soup looks, okay? And this is, like I said, this is your basic, it's the basis for your chicken soup, uh, your cream of chicken soup. You can definitely um, add all kinds of goodies to it, like we talked about. So any vegetable you have on hand that you want in it, is, is game and good to go. And then this pressure is going to release, natural release, meaning it's going to come down on its own in a moment. And when it does, I'll let you see that. But we have our uh, pizza dough in the oven here. Let me pull, I want to set it on something. And we, were, we let it rest. And what happens during that time, it does rise some with that yeast, but it, it won't uh, typically double. I think I may have given you that note in your, in your description. And then <clears throat> this has, I want to, I'm going to pour some of that oil off. I have a bit of an excess going on. Okay, and the good news is the crust, the crust only has to pre-bake for about five minutes, and then we just pile the toppings on and run it back in to finish. So we're in the home stretch. Okay, awesome. And what I really need is a a mat. Can I have one of those cutting boards? 
Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. Okay, that goes right there. And so what I'm gonna do now is divide this. I don't think I need this anymore. And I really don't need the hot pad. It was only 100 degrees and our bodies are close to that temperature, aren't they? 98 something. So what I'll do, whoop, I'm gonna divide this sort of into fourths. Here we go. And it, you saw earlier that it got a little soft. So having, you can learn from this that if you'll, if you'll watch it a little more closely and uh, you can have yours a little bit drier than that. And what, what the recipe recommends is wet fingers for the shaping. And we're gonna press that to just a, about a quarter inch thick. We want it to be, we want a nice thin crust. And this is another place where you can have it your way. Let me get me a little water right next to me for convenience. This is where you can have it your way in terms of how thick or thin you like your crust. You know, some like it thinner and crispier and some like it a little thicker and chewier. So. You have that option. Yes, that corner is for those who are dairy free. Okay. And what I really, I feel like I need flour more than I need water in this uh, operation here. Because I've gotten it so. I got it a little sticky. <laughs> we, I think we have some pizza dough in there. Felt, felt a few little lumps of something. All right. Yeah, now I'm getting somewhere. Right. Now I want to do some on the stone as well. I'll put just a little, little sprinkle of flour. And with the, the USA pan, your, the bottom of your crust is going to be a little bit um, softer and less browned. And with the pizza stone, it's going to be a little bit browner and crispier. So um, I have one family member. This is how they want it every time. Don't mess with my pizza. I want it this way every time, you know. So you can, again, you can have your preferences there. No, it's, it, it may be ready a little faster, actually. This, well, I doubled it. So you sh you're gonna get, you should get two nice pizza pies out of it. I think we're still. Okay. Now I'm going to run these in for the obligatory five minute uh, browning. And 
kind of, boy, do I have, there we go. That's good. I don't want to let my oven cool off completely. So five, while we do that, I have, I'm going to share my lunch with you. And that is a marvelous green bean salad that is also out of what the Bible says about Healthy Living Cookbook. And I pre-steamed the green beans. And so they are ready for, I keep moving my dishcloth. Uh, they are ready to go in the recipe. We'll deal with the rest of that dough later. Let me grab the green beans. We've already got the tomatoes out. Oh, you know what, Maggie, the green beans are in the kitchen or whoever, any, whoever has time to run to the other fridge for me. I'll be making the dressing while you do that. So this is just another example of how wonderful everything I've tried out of this cookbook is. I've been cooking my way through it for about a year now and we have found all sorts of new family favorites in that cookbook so I'm just telling you it is my new favorite I have a lot of cookbooks in my kitchen but this is the one my go-to book and I'm just learning all kinds of new things and every ingredient is going to be something that you will really enjoy and um, I want you to look at the inside the book look inside the book see the special he uh, heading she has at the foot or they have Amy and Hope at the foot of the page because you've got uh, on a lot of pages you have love thy leftovers she's going to give you great creative ideas for how to reuse those ingredients have them look like a totally different um, meal or entree and then um, some great nutritional facts and information where there's a section where she'll spotlight um, what's so great about green beans for example or on another page she might be she might talk about the beef, but you're going to learn a lot. So it's a text, almost a textbook. You just, by osmosis, you're going to learn so much about why your food is going to be so good for you. And so what book is that? That's this one, What the Bible Says About Healthy Living Cookbook. And I would, if I weren't behind, I'd read to you from some of those sections. But this is the Emmelster. And this is something that you can both prepare and serve your salad dressings out of and because you can just use the little trigger to re-stir it and get that oil back in the <laughs> back in she's like she's just gonna spray air freshener out here um, but anyway so that is gonna combine that I have a couple of the ingredients in here already and then the other ingredients in the in the green bean salad need to be um, pureed in the blender. So I've got those in the try best. Fresh basil leaves, some red onion, purple onion, some extra virgin olive oil, I'm going to give it one more second. I saw a slightly large chunk of onion, not large chunk, but maybe more than you want in a bite. Same book. Same book. Did anyone find the green beans out of the fridge for me? Aha. Uh -huh. Hide and. Say that again. This? Emulster. This is the Tribest Personal Blender. All right. So th love these little glass storage containers. You don't have to worry about plastic. And then we, we might reuse that if we have any left. Y'all save me a bite. I, this is my lunch, remember, okay? It's so fresh and wonderful. And look at the color that we're getting here. Now, let me pop my lid off. Let me pop my lid off. I don't remember what to do. That is my stirrer. Oh yeah, it has a lock. 
here's there's a, it's, it locks and unlocks so that the lid doesn't come off when you don't want it to. It's yeah, it's adult proof. Not <laughs> children can work it just fine. Children do fine. Here we go. So let me add that. Just kidding, but it is good enough. And so the cool thing about this recipe is you'll have enough for the green bean salad and for another recipe. So if you want to use that to marinate some meat or if you just want to use it as salad dressing on your next green salad, then you can do that. And so I'm just going to stir that. There's Dijon mustard and some red wine vinegar in the bottom. Ah. But it's a good, this is a good job for children. And of course, you can do the shake method, but when your oil separate, you know, after you're gonna be able to serve out of this and then put it in the refrigerator. So you don't have to fight with it. You can just stir it to go. And so I feel like I got it so full. Let me get my, some of that mustard to the top half there. All right. And there you go. So this little cover is your lid. And so if you did want to shake it, you, your finger fits perfectly there. So you can do this number. And then that way you can do a little at a time, but I want a whole bunch. So I'm going to unlock it and I'm just going to pour. There we go. There we go. And so other than the couple of minutes, I, I steamed the beans in the pressure cooker for literally two minutes. Speaking of two minutes, I want to show you your quinoa, but um, I steamed it for two minutes in the pressure cooker and you know, other than that, you're just dicing up your tomatoes. And you really, if you can find the great tomatoes, which I could not this shopping trip, uh, then you don't even have to do that. You just rinse them and go. And so we're going to serve this just like this. But do you, I love the beautiful color. I love the freshness of the flavors and the fact that it would be as beautiful on a holiday, you know, as appropriate for a holiday table. Um, and you could let it sit and come closer to room temperature if it were in the winter months but boy in the summer to serve it chilled it's so refreshing voila we're all done and I will say along the lines of the emolster and what the Bible says about healthy living cookbook again she has some fantastic dressings in there lots of great options a raspberry vinaigrette a balsamic vinaigrette and so I don't buy the store-bought junk anymore I spend two minutes and make my own and so it's just much better for you and it tastes great so did I take five minutes can I pull out my pizzas and load them up now I think we did so the only thing I want to do first is show you the quinoa and then I'll pass it over so that they can serve and All right, so unlock. Here we go. And we just, our seasonings are kind of here and there. We're just going to stir that in. But do you see the change? And so I hope you enjoy this. And it's loaded with great vegetables and herbs. And then it's seasoned with that nice organic chicken broth. And this is such a hearty, this is actually what I had for lunch yesterday. And I sauteed, I had some red, yellow, and orange bell pepper on hand. And so I sauteed some of those and threw them in. And that was my lunch. And it's because the quinoa is a complete protein, it's very filling, it's wonderful. And so you can make a meal of that. Let me scoot those apart. All right, y'all ready to put some toppings on your pizza? Let's go. I keep, okay. That's what happens when you don't put things back where they belong. 
and I want, I do need something down. Since these have been in the, in the oven, I don't want to lay them directly on the counter here. Yeah, and you can, I want you to serve those on the same plate if you could. And then don't forget, ladies, to go get the um, cheesecake out of the freezer for us. They get all the foods coming out at once, and they are working like crazy to get it to you. And uh, let's, ju let's just thank them one more time. I appreciate their help so very much. Thank you, girls. Thank you, thank you. So let me pull out these pizzas, and we're going to load them up, and then we'll run them back in. And it is perfectly acceptable and expected for it to crack a little bit. So that is not a mistake. But nobody sees it once you get all those great toppings on. So we're not going to let that worry us. But I did want you to know, this thing is heavy. There we go. But I did want you to know that that is normal and expected. All right, oven, stay hot for us. We're about to need you. Okay, and so I, in that same cookbook, she has a fabulous marinara. But in the interest of time, I did not make that for you today. <laughs> so we just really needed a few more things to add, you know, but, but I decided I may need one of these men to come up in this jar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Y'all are so sweet. Thank you. Um, so I am going to spread this. I'm just going to load it up with marinara. Woo, that is loading up. We'll see. We'll see. All right. And then the turkey sausage recipe, you can choose from two. There is a great one that Sue Becker does that's in our red recipe collection, called, and it's just called turkey sausage. And then there's one also in what? The Bible says cookbook. And they're a little bit different. They're similar. Whoop, that was warm. They're similar, but slightly different. So, you know, try them both and then stick with your favorite if you like. You can't go wrong, like the mills. And then I realize some of you don't like a lot of sauce and some of you like a ton of sauce. So I'm, I'm trying to kind of keep it in the middle of the road. How am I doing? We okay? Um, I do find if you get too heavy handed with your sauce and your other toppings that the crust doesn't want to um, get done during the baking. So. You, you can shoot yourself in the foot there without meaning to. Okay, and so I always put the cheese on next and then the meat last. And I only do that, um, well, I do it for two reasons. One, it's prettier because if you cover all your toppings with your cheese, then you just don't see the, you just don't, you know, it just looks different. Um, the other thing is it, the meat on top, will keep your cheese from getting too golden brown and crispy. We want it melted, but I don't, I don't really want it all brown and crispy. And you can certainly choose from some of our other great cheeses out there. There's a, there's a sun-dried tomato basil. Um, there's a garden veggie has the veggies right in the cheese, some veggies. And there are places where I, you know, reach for that one. But this is garlic, this is garlic herb. Say that again. Oh my goodness. I, well, I've got plenty of dough, but I forgot to do you a separate, separate section. Okay. I have a little spot here. I'm going to clean. I'm going to clean it. Originally, I was doing you a whole, you know, when I, when I thought I was having time for four, I was doing you a whole pizza. 
with no cheese on it. Here we go. I'm going to fix it. Thank you so much for catching me before it was too late. Thank you, thank you. All right, I'm going to add a little, um, add a little more marinara right there because I've raked it all off. Here we go. Now, here comes some turkey sausage. And you could, you know, go crazy with your toppings as much to your heart's content. Um, so if you want to saute some veggies, I, we love to do a veggie pizza. And you could do pesto as your, excuse me, pesto as your, um, it, pesto in place of marinara if you like. That's, that may be, you could do a meat lovers. The guys at my house don't want me to skimp on the, on the meat toppings, so I'm, I'm a little heavy handed. We've got, we have several men in the room, so we're going to take good care of you today. And here it is. So let's run these in. You know, still pretty warm from the pre-bake. And I'm intentionally putting the USA pan on the bottom and the stone on the top because of their tendency to brown and not brown. Because if I, I'm just thinking that perhaps if I put the stone on the bottom, that the pizza may get a little too brown on the bottom. So intentionally putting that up on the top. Okay, let's see where we are. I think that I have shared all the recipes with you. Have I missed anything? Let's see what we have. Let me make sure. I came back to the soup. Yes. Okay. Now it's just all about tasting. And then if you have any questions that we didn't get to and I will I'm seeing uh, and we touched on favorite gluten-free baking mix in addition to the brown rice flour mix so you've got those two recipes that you can take with and then please remember to go on uh, line to our website and check out uh, under the learn link choose videos and then go see gluten-free bread and rolls for a lot of additional information on the grains, how to prepare the flours, how to make uh, easy bread and rolls and biscuits at home. Uh, you're going to love the whipping cream biscuits, by the way, that are covered in that class. Really quick and easy to whip up. Um, and so both the biscuit and there's a dinner roll recipe in there that can um, be made ahead and then pulled out and, and browned as needed and you you probably know if you've been eating gluten-free for a little while that particularly the baked goods are I need to set the time are um, best when they are fresh baked and so that's going to enable you to do your own at home they're going to be way more nutritious than what you can buy at the grocery store made out of that white rice flour Okay, and I did want to touch on, excuse me, the Country Beans book. There are, there's more good stuff that I didn't share with you about that book in particular, and then also about the beans themselves. Uh, the book, it contains a mix, a flour mix for um, Bob's Best Biscuits. It contains a flour mix for muffins. It has a pancake recipe, a, a gluten-free pancake recipe, and then a dairy-free also. The muffin recipe, she gives you alterations for how to make that into a cake flour as well. So lots of great information there. And most of what's in Country Beans is gluten-free already. There are a few occasions where she might call for some spelt flour or some wheat flour. Um, and 
you're, you're going to learn about the spelt. Remember, we're going to give you that article, which um, I'll do that as soon as as soon as we're through pulling things out of the oven, I can print some of those for you. But if you should have to leave before you get one, email me and I can send it to you as an attachment, the SPELT article. That's S-P-E-L-T. And that is a whole grain. It's an ancient variety of wheat. And it is sold in those same two-pound bag, one-gallon pail, six-gallon bucket. Okay? So I want you to know about that. But, but if the recipe is calling for wheat flour, then you can substitute your brown rice blend, or you can substitute favorite baking blend that I've given you in this handout, or there are several flour blends in the Country Beans cookbook as well. Now, her flour blends, as you might guess from the name, do contain some bean flour. And you may love that, or you may not. And so either way, you've got several options there, and, um, the recipes, the last thing I'd say about that is the recipes are marked uh, gluten-free and the index is marked gluten-free. And so you, as you scan that index, which I encourage you to go ahead and take a look at the books over here, as you scan that index, you'll see that she already tells you which ones already are. And then if they're not, you make that little change, substituting your flour and you're good to go. Okay, question? Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's barley in, um, in Ezekiel mix. We have, in our red recipe collection, there's an Ezekiel fasting bread. And we give you a recipe for the amount of grains and beans that you mill into flour for that recipe. The, the top uh, ingredient is hard red wheat. That is not gluten-free. Another ingredient is barley. That is not gluten-free. However, the rest of the list is gluten-free. So, what it calls for some spelt, and what I have done in the past is replace all of the hard red wheat with additional spelt. And again, you've got to read the article, and then you have to decide for yourself whether you feel comfortable trying the spelt. And if you do, I would say just start with, like, a muffin. You know, do one, just do one thing, have one serving, for that day, see how you feel. I, you're, I, you know, I think it's going to be very rare for anyone to have an issue with that. But if you have strong allergies to grasses because it's a wheat, then you might still have an issue with the spelt. But most people will not. Anyway, um, so I just replace all the hard red with spelt, and then the barley. You could just do additional millet, or what I would do is buckwheat. I would do buckwheat in place of the barley. And then you have your beans, and you can also let that flour mix uh, be one that you use. You could use it to substitute in your muffins and pancakes and the waffles that we made today. And that way you're getting 100% whole grain and whole bean flour, no starches. So you'll, you know, you'll see in the bread and rolls class, if you're doing a yeast bread or roll, you're pretty much required to use 50% starches uh, in most of those recipes. So this is a, that's a place, your quick breads, and by quick bread, I mean those where baking soda, baking powder is your leavener, not the yeast. In those quick breads that I just named, waffles, pancakes, uh, biscuits, muffins, that's a great place to just substitute your Ezekiel flour or the remainders of flour when you're making up your mixes and you have a little bit of buckwheat flour left and a little bit of millet flour left and a little bit of brown rice flour. Put the, this is what I do. Uh, I actually keep a little canister handy as I'm making up my bread mixes and any residuals go in that little canister and then tomorrow morning when I make muffins or pancakes or biscuits or what have you, I'll use that flour then while it's still good and fresh and all my nutrients are there. Okay. Yes. Okay, perfect. No, that's great because we really didn't want it frozen. She's saying your cheesecake is kind of a smoothie texture, so you're going to eat it with a spoon uh, rather than a fork, but um, it, it's not frozen. So. And you can you may really enjoy it frozen actually uh, in the heat of summer. Yeah, yep. 
So, or just have it for breakfast. Is that what you said? Yeah, you could do that. Sure. And you could sprinkle, yeah. Or what about the uh, raspberry squares? You got your crumble topping. Okay, question back here. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sure. Sure. Um, your first question was, what, what's the role of the tapioca flour or starch in the recipes? It, it is a starch. It's going to be the, it's something that is to lighten the texture of your gluten-free baking. And so you'll find that you're using tapioca starch, arrowroot powder, and or potato starch typically as your starch element. And sometimes it'll call for more than one of those in lots of gluten-free recipes. Well, we have one person present who can't tolerate the potato starch very well. And so my suggestion to to someone in that circumstance is replace that with the arrowroot starch. That's the easiest starch to digest, but if, if all you have on hand is arrowroot or all you have on hand is tapioca starch, then yeah, you could, I would just go ahead and replace the second starch called for with the one I have on hand. They do have slightly different properties, um, and I already told you about what to watch for if you're thickening something with the arrowroot, but in most cases, you're still gonna come out okay, although I will say it's been a challenge to learn to cook, especially the gluten-free rolls and loaves because they are very temperamental and slight changes do make a difference. And uh, so you can, you, know, you can cause a failure if you start straying too much from the tried and true recipe. So don't go crazy on that, but in a pinch, yes, you could just increase the one starch that you do have on hand for that second one that's called for, that would work just fine. But their purpose is uh, lightening the texture of that loaf because otherwise the gluten-free would tend to be uh, pretty heavy. And so, um, again, you gotta see that, you gotta attend that class or watch that video. Um, check out, it's at Learn Videos, Gluten-Free Bread and Rolls, okay? Let me stick this in the fridge. And did I have another question? I thought I heard somebody call my name. No? All right, let's check the timer. And is there, has all, have all the desserts been served? Fantabulous. We gotta serve pizza. Y'all are eating dessert first. Oh, you didn't get, they didn't get soup. I think the ladies didn't realize because the lid was on. They, they would like to try the cream of chicken soup, which is that first pan right, right here on this metal table. Well, thank you for letting us know. I didn't realize that. We, I put the lid on, and then they just didn't even see it, I think. so. Okay, let's get the pizzas back out here. For some reason, I'm putting those away when I need to be spreading them out. I know you won't believe me, but I'm much faster in my kitchen at home <laughs> when I'm. All right, let me peek. Okay, the cheese is melted, but we're gonna have to give that crust another minute. So this, I see that you're still eating. We're not gonna kick you out of your chairs, but um, I would say, in fact, uh, Jim, just for the video's sake, I'm gonna pull one of the pizzas out that's not entirely done so we can show it and then we'll wrap up class. Okay, so the ch you see the cheese is melting. The, we, this probably needs another five minutes. So I'm gonna let you enjoy the rest of that dessert and 
You can uh, look around the store. I want you to check out the books and the display table here, and then come back and see us. We should have it out of the oven and sliced and ready to serve in. Uh, give us at least 10 minutes, 10, 15. Okay, and she's going to be scooping up the soup right now, so we'll make that available here at the serving table. You have been so gracious. We are thrilled to have you here with us today. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you um, as our customers, and we're available to you. So if you think of a question you failed to ask in class, uh, write me a note, support at breadbeckers.com. Just send me an email anytime, day or night, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Okay? Thank you.